Hail and well met. I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you one and all to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeons and Dragons broadcast presented by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here to witness our playthrough of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Joining us as always, we have Typhon the Wizard, Rim the Ranger, Persephone the Bard, Falkrin the Cleric, Jax the Rogue, and Silas the Paladin Fighter. Uh, any announcements from Lawful Stupid? I am still about the obviously the, uh, the sponsorship. Uh, Sean's got game. Have you, have you actually got any spaces? I've got one sort of space for a game of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden that I'm going to be doing on Fridays. Um, and I've got uh, room in the other one that I put up that it's going to be either Wednesdays or Tuesdays. The um, the uh, the day is um, flexible for that one. So it'll just depend on how many people apply and how many people want to do it on one day or the other. Because you're pretty much flying now, aren't you? So you're, you know, you're, you've got a good couple of groups up and running. Yeah, um, it's going around. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time. Conscript Group 14, having traveled through the fallen city of El Torel and reached the Grand Cathedral to Torm, made their way down into the catacombs below. There, they discovered the tomb of the Unknown Warrior, a holy site that maintained its consecration despite being in hell. After fighting off more devils, they finally found the group of survivors that they had hoped was still alive, more than a hundred strong. While taking a much-deserved rest, Persephone learned that Lulu the Holophant was part of the original Hellrider invasion of Avernus, although she is unable to recall more details. Typhon finally located his friend Islin, a mysterious woman from his past who had an interesting proposal, and Falcon and Jax discovered a secret tunnel. After finishing their rest, most of the party went to explore this tunnel, leaving Rim, Rhea, Typhon, and Lulu behind. At the end of the tunnel was a strong door. Upon opening it, this is what they found. You open the door, and a hot wind snatches at your clothes and flesh, howling in your ears. Whatever room once lay beyond this door has been ripped away, and you cling to the doorframe in horror as you gaze out upon the vast desolation of Avernus that stretches out hundreds of feet below you. You see a blood-red river, and on its banks rages a battle that threatens to overwhelm your mind. You now know the ultimate definition of violence. Creatures the size of houses pit their strength against one another in the midst of thousands upon thousands of smaller warriors, tearing into each other with blade, claw, and fang. Huge black floating fortresses disgorge, clouds of imps and terrible balls of flame rocket across the battlefield. An unending wail of hatred mingled with groans of horror rises up from the carnage, and the stench of brimstone and blood makes you wretch. From this vantage, you can clearly see the chains that bind the massive moat of earth upon which Eldorel rests. With a groaning shudder, the huge chains tighten, the city trembles, and you struggle to keep your balance as Eldorel sinks several yards closer to the surface of Avernus. Behold the Blood War. I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Except me and Rim, I think. Everyone. <laughs> oh. oh, everyone. Yes. Did oh. you just change the volume? I did. Okay. Oh, this right. got a I have to change critical it, fail, and I'm so going to fall into the pits of hell. <laughs> My first roll of the game. Yeah, Is no, it... I had that. All right, so with an 11, mm -hmm. Falcon 
hope she doesn't fall into the pits of hell. 21 for me. All right, so we've got Silas with a 13, Falkron with an 11, Persephone with a critical fail, which works out to a 7, uh, Rim with a 21, Typhon with a 10, and Jax with a 21. So everyone except for Persephone has succeeded. The, um, the earthquake and the shaking that has been uh, intermittent while you've been here in El Terrell, uh, at this point, there's, this is a much more severe shake. Everybody feels their feet fall out from underneath them as they sink and are weightless for a few minutes and manage to catch themselves. Back up in the catacombs where all of the survivors are, a huge piece of masonry dislodges from the top of the roof and falls onto the fountain that is not um, that has not been consecrated. The black, brackish water oh, smashing okay. it and water begins to pour everywhere along the floor. Uh, many people go running and uh, uh, scattering to uh, help those who may have been hurt by the falling masonry. Persephone, you are in the process of falling off of the moat of Earth. Please make a acrobatics check. Oh, yes. Th yes, that's the one you wanted. You are so right for making an acrobatics. A moat of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> No! An 11. An 11 is enough. You, <laughs> but man, you fall, and as you hit the ground, there is a slight slope to this uh, part of the, the floor that exists here before vanishing into space or into, uh, into the air below <laughs> a furnace. And you begin to <laughs> slide down on the gravel. And you put out your arms and, and manage to slow yourself just enough so that your feet your legs, your thighs hang out over the edge, but you manage to stop before you go any further. I immediately scramble to, like, try to get her back in. And I'm going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, hey, now, self-sacrifice is my thing. Watch your grip, Falcon. <laughs> As you are being helped to your feet, hey, uh, Persephone, and all of you, you hear a voice. Well, now, uh, this is an interesting development. And you look up and you see, hanging upside down from the top of where this area changes over from being a room that has been ripped away to the actual dirt and earth underneath El Torel, is hanging um, what appears to be a spine devil. Um, one of the ones that's larger than an imp, but uh, smaller than the barb devil. And he looks, he's looking down at you with a, a curious expression on his face for a second. Uh, I just am working to scramble to my feet and away from him. <laughs> Hello. And he drops down spins in the air and as he comes down he does a little thing and lands in front of you all and does a little bow with his wing my name is Owen Osborne and I'm at your service he has a wide mouth but the bottom part of his jaw extends a little bit and comes up over it kind of like a bulldog and he of course has the wings long purplish dark wings with spines and spikes sticking up over his head uh, head going down his back and of course along his tail many red tipped glowing spines Jack pulls out his dagger oh that's a big one <laughs> hold on a second Jack hold on why do you address us in such a civilized manner mm, I suppose that is a fair question um, I would hope that all of my Brethren are capable of such manners if they saw to it to uh, extend the courtesy. And why do you seek to extend this courtesy to us now? Well, why you get right to it, don't you? Hmm. Well, this is an interesting uh, turn of events, wouldn't you say? Technically, I am 
required by my superiors to report the existence of this uh, little door, which uh, I'm sure you'll notice from our end looks nothing like the sword. And as you turn around and look at the door, you can see that you have indeed come through what was on your side a very normal looking door, but on this side is clearly designed to be indistinguishable from the wall, the masonry that is that must have at some point uh, comprised this room. So, this is uh, hmm, a bit of a weak spot or point of egress or ingress into Eldrell. Would be very useful knowledge, you see. But uh, there is a bit of a loophole. I am under no obligation as to when I am required to inform my superiors. So perhaps we could come to some sort of agreement. We've learned the hard way not to make contracts with devils. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. Yes, um, well, I don't need to know the details of that, but um, perhaps a different contract than what you've experienced before could be made. A contract would, of course, need to be created. It is simply the only way things work down here. It is much for your benefit as for mine. How, how does it benefit us? Well, I won't inform my superiors that this exists. Oh, for a period of, let's see. Well, I suppose it would depend on what you were willing to give. What do you want? Hmm. Now, that's what I'd like to hear. Make me an offer. Um, I hold out five gold pieces. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm afraid that gold has very little value here in the hells. You understand, it's simple economics. A system of commerce requires the parties involved to have come to an agreement regarding the value of currency. In the material world, this is usually a metal of some sort. Uh, for example, gold. Here in the hells... It really has no purpose, although large, large sums of it can be used to tempt certain mortals for their souls. Oh, please, give me riches and I'll give you my soul. It's more common than you would think. So, here in the hell's gold is of less value. What then to use as exchange for goods and services? Well, of course, I'm sure you know the answer, but we need not get to that. I certainly don't require any of your souls. You don't happen to possess a soul coin, do you? Well, I've got lots of coins. Oh, well, if you had a soul coin, you would know it. Why, is it blue? Mm, it depends on the quality of the soul. Um, for, it's what we use for exchanging for goods and services. As on the prime material play, the rarer the metal, the more value it's been assigned. Here in the hells, the soul of an individual who's led a base and selfish life, perhaps a petty criminal, well, such souls are quite common here, not worth as much. Whereas the soul of one such as yourself, he looks towards you, Persephone, would be quite rare indeed, and therefore of greater value. And... Uh, well, that's where the soul coins come in. A soul coin is a soul that's been refined and rendered down into a more utilitarian form. Coin that contains a single soul, which could be used for a number of things. As with other forms of currency, it really represents potential as opposed to being value in and of itself. We don't have any of those. Wow. I don't think goblins have souls, but I do have a bag of pepper, if you like pepper. 
Uh, well, no, no, thank you. No bags of pickle. Well, let's see. What else could we come up with? I'm sure there must be something. I know. Hmm, perhaps we could make some sort of arrangement so that you would pay me a soul coin in the future. But what if we never have one? I find that highly unlikely. You're bound to come across one eventually. If your superiors were to know of this door, how could that affect us? We'll just leave. Hmm. Well, I suppose you could just leave. Does the door in the tunnel beyond it lead to any place interesting? Just a no. deserted catacomb. Make a per deception check, Persephone. I say, oh. I, I say it as well. You All got right, two crap it. rolls out of the way. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know why I said that. I've got a <laughs> minus one in deception. One character. Oh, 17. Hey! 17. 17. Hey! So two 17s. Not so bad. <laughs> to a devil in hell, it may be worse than you think. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Well, I could certainly appreciate the skill of a good liar, but I'm afraid you'll have to do better than that. Yes, well, I am uh, at the moment hmm, able to contact at least 12 of my brethren um, with a single thought. And they, in turn, would be able to contact others, and so on and so forth. And it would be a full-on invasion, I would think. Of course, we could simply fly into the city, but... Well, access to a other part of the city is All right. perhaps worth All right. something. All right, so if we agree to bring you a soul coin later, you will keep this entryway secret? Well, let's see here. Hmm. There is, I suppose, a possibility that you will not find a soul coin. We ought to come up with some sort of contingency for that. Hmm. Why don't we just gut him? I've killed lots of imps. No, no, no. Well, we can reach we can reach an agreement with this creature. Hmm, excellent. How about this? In three days' time, you will provide me either with a soul coin or 3,000 gold pieces. I turn to Falcon and say, under my breath as much as possible, 3,000 gold pieces to save all those lives is nothing. Uh, no, absolutely. I, my, my only thought was where we would find such, but I know Jack's. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I haven't got much gold. I, I, he's, plund he's plundered plenty, so I'm sure we could at least. Would you accept things that could be sold for the same amount if needed? Jewels and such? Hmm. I suppose. I think Typhon so, owes me about a thousand gold. So. Within three days, a soul coin, how would we find you again? Ooh, once we form a contract, I will know where you are. Ten days. Well, in ten days, if my calculations are correct, there will no longer be a door here, a tunnel beyond it, or anything remaining of El Torel. Right. Six days. Three <laughs> days. Four. Excellent. Four days it is. Five. All right, so in four days hence. So, <laughs> are we done haggling? Are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Jack doesn't <laughs> quite understand haggling. I just, I did this. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, Jack, two days. <laughs> <laughs> what about a lump of obsidian? obsidian? <laughs> All right. So He's looking for his in three, So in four days... We are to either return. We, we, you will either you will find us, and then we will either have a soul coin to give you, or three thousand gold worth of treasure. Fair enough. And what will I give you in exchange? Total secrecy about the door. Mm -hmm. I will not you... speak a word about it to anyone. Or think it. Very or well. Or think it. Hmm. Clever. Very well. Very well then. Handshake? Oh, of course. Uh, although there is... Um, 
I, I could well, write it. notice that you have a, an instrument, my dear. Are you a fan of music by any chance? Nah, I never touch the stuff. Mm, again, with the lies. Excellent. He snaps his fingers and there's a... And a tiny, tiny imp, just pathetic thing, just... Oh, Spears on the bitch. floor next to you all. Just... Can I stab the imp? And he holds up a uh, scroll. You stab the imp? I get excited when I see the imp. Yeah. <laughs> holds up a scroll. He says, yes, and thank you. Can I, get a, can I get a reset DM about where individual people are and what they're doing in our party? Yes, we have uh, Typhon and Rim and Rhea and Lulu back up in the tomb with the survivors. And we have the rest of you here in this little alcove several hundred feet above the uh, Plains of Avernus. Excellent. Um, Silas steps over and puts a hand on Falkrin and then looks at Persephone and says, you know, I can't let you make the same mistake I did, right? No, we can't let these people be slaughtered, though. Yes, I understand completely what's at stake. Deals are to be made. Everything's well in hand. So, shake on it. Mm, a simple signed contract will do. Excellent, but I am a simple folk and a good handshake over a deal well struck is something I believe in. Hmm. I have a feeling that you have something ulterior in mind. We'll just stick with the contact for now, and perhaps in the future we'll be on handshaking terms. Uh, he's got a point. Dwarves are dirty. Mm, it's less about the dwarves and then more about, and he points at the uh, holy symbol around your neck. You might want nice. to hide that, by the way. <laughs> uh, servant of the gods is never afraid to show their faith. <laughs> Have it your way. And he motions to you, Persephone, he says, would you be so kind? And there's the little, like, imp, sort of impling holding up this scroll. Uh, she opens it and looks at it. It is music, and along the music, is a uh, the text of the uh, the agreement the that you have had so far. Um, please state what you wish, and we will have an accord. That in no frame of time will you write, think, say, or relay the information of this door to anyone in any way. And also, uh, no frame of time, I believe you mean to say, not before four days. If we break the contract, yes, but if we give you the contract, then forever. Well, I, fair enough. Although it will be a moot point. We'll and see. also, we wish for you to go to hell. And I cast level three guiding bolt. <laughs> Very good. Also, roll an attack. Fighting? I get to kill oh, yeah. the imp. Oh yeah, we're fighting. He threatened every refugee that's in this place. Like, <laughs> yeah, but he said he can think like that, and people will show up and kill us all. But oh, well, okay. great. That's, so he yeah, can I think really like. I didn't really want to make a deal with the devil anyway. So that's <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll, roll an attack. Roll an attack, Falcon. All right. Casting. Eighteen. Very good. As the right. Cassie makes a hand motion and a shimmering shield comes up and the guiding bolt ricochets off. off. It. And right. he flies up and says, ah, well, I see. Are you sure you wish to pursue this line of action? You are we have, quite vulnerable. We have been in hell long enough to know that we don't make deals with devils. Hmm. Have it your way. Well, 3,000 gold pieces, though. I mean, 
I'm sure Falcon's got plenty of that. Not Falcon, I mean, uh, Typhon's got plenty he of that. He starts to play away. He looks back and he says, This is your last chance, you understand? And I do respect your beliefs and your convictions, but this is simply the way things are here. If you don't go with the flow, so to speak, you will die quite quickly. I'll sign you it. seem to be I'll a good it. lot. I'll sign it. Well, very well, but what? I'm not going to come any closer if I'm going to be attacked again. Well, I still have the paper, right? Useless if I don't sign it. Um, if it's music, does he intend her to play it, or yes? As you play the song, that will be the uh, your signing of the contract. Persephone, what are you doing? We cannot let devils come and murder all the refugees. We can't. It's 3,000 gold. He says You now. cannot trust. You are that trusting, one. you are trusting like us, one spine devil in all of hell who says in a thought that he can notify all of his superiors. Persephone, it's likely that he already has. Um, Jade, uh, with your high perception, as you look out along the mode of Earth, you see about 50 yards away another one of these spine devils hanging down, and then beyond that, another. You look around and you see that on regular intervals, the entire bottom of El Terrell is covered with spine devils just hanging, observing the blood war below. Oh, look, there's lots of them. Within view, there are at least 30. Too many to put on my fingers. Mm -hmm. Grim, they've been down there quite an awfully long time. <laughs> sure, all right. They're Last chance. Bunch. <laughs> Can They're I kill smart, your imp right? as well? They're intelligent and won't make a terrible mistake. Correct, Rim? I agree. I feel confident in their decision-making abilities. I do not. <laughs> I'm so glad you do. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, I start to play it. Very well. I attack. All right, we will roll initiative. I didn't say who I attacked. But who do you attack? No. You still, we still need to roll initiative. Um, I do that by doing this. Are we attacking all we Jesus Christ? Oh dear. Do we not have to click our tokens because they're not up? That's a good point. Um Well, I'm afraid we're just gonna have to go with the standard white screen. Let's see here. I will move you all over there, and then we will bring... All right. Please hold. <laughs> so many maps. Yay. Yeah, we're crushing these initiative rules. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't Save count. Shows. Doesn't, doesn't count. It's not up. All right. Let's see if we can make this work now. So I'm going to drag you all onto this blank. Um, oh, come on. Erg. Yeah, so I'm... A lot of convinced. silence there, folks. That's a, so, I'm, little... so I'm convinced at a certain point that Sean's just going to have all of us make contracts... For, well, you know. clearly, it's not Sean that's doing it. It's just the that's way right. things not me. are not here. Fault. Don't you it, know? So, <laughs> and as a bit of a refresher, if I'm recalling correctly, did Corcoran Pebblemoss talk to us about the nature of devil contracts? Uh, he did. And didn't In he the sense that they are binding on an existential level for 
devils almost, right? They are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like they can just sign them and then lie. If you're right. deceived in the contract, that's one thing. But if it's straightforward and you sign it, they can't just go back on their word. Yeah, so on the flip side, if, he's, if he, a devilish thing to do would be to promise not to do something that you already did. Sure. But then it's a moot point anyway, right? But then he broke the contract. So he broke. He, no, he didn't. He didn't break. He can't break he the contract. Yeah. If he already notified everyone and they're just holding off. Yeah. And then he agrees not to tell anyone from that moment forward. They'd be ready if that was the case. Yeah, I'd be. You could have done a um, a insight check to see if he was lying. Let's see. We've got Persephone, Falcon, Silas. I think in my memory Silas. back to how it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> memory insight check. <sighs> okay. I think I've got you all. Participating I have all, now. But anyway. Oh, no. Oh, well, so Typhon is there, but he's not there. I'm not there. He's not there. So we've got uh, Jax, mm -hmm. Persephone, yeah, I Silas, Silas is there. I'm going to draw a little line here representing. So this is the exit. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is maps on the fly. With... Indeed. <laughs> it's almost as <laughs> if. Well, well, Sean is. Well, no, well, you couldn't well, have imagined is, someone. I, yeah, I, I would never have attack. thought someone would be stupid enough to attack with that many imps, uh, that many spine devils around. That but, many imps. You know, <laughs> that many giant imps. Still singing. Oh, Jax to... is having an influence on in everyone. I just want to commend you on your. Uh... Did your daughter draw this map? Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> just now. Thank you. He's been taking lessons from this uh, DM that runs Missed Opportunities on Fridays. That's a really good show. If anyone hasn't seen yeah. that, it's uh, who hosts that? Uh, well, Lawful Stupid, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Lawful yeah, Stupid. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's the DM. Creatures. He is a, he's a handsome guy, but he hides his face with this fur thing right. that he puts on. It's it looks up. like a guitar on the side. <laughs> yes, it does. So there is the Spine Devil. Okay, and he's sort of out in the. And he's ether. out. He's flying above Elturel, above uh, Avernus. This is a bad idea. This is the worst idea ever. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I'm interested to hear who Silas is actually attacking, but probably Falcon. Why would he attack me? I'm not doing anything. Uh, hey, so uh, I'm, I don't have I don't have um, Falkran up. No, I'm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, let me. Uh, I rolled a four, Sean. So uh, if you click on your icon and roll again, then you can manually edit it. Lovely. Do that. Do Silas here. has got that look in his eye. Ah, so yeah, not not so much there. It's All the right, look there. of someone who doesn't have a soul. All right. It's, it's like I think he's about to do something. All right. Uh, that is all we got. We got Jax with an 18.2. What are you doing, Jax? I was on a 16, sorry. Oh. Well, in that <laughs> case, he goes first. He appears to be waiting with an eyebrow raised. Next up, we have Jax at 16. Well, Jax has got no idea of who, if we're attacking. <laughs> but he has got his yeah. knife out. And he just says, In a contract, I want to kill your imp. <laughs> that could be arranged. Oh, good. And I look <laughs> at him. That poor imp's I like... look at imp and I just wink. <laughs> Persephone. The salacious crumb of imps. You keep playing. All right. The contract will be completed if you get to the end of your next turn without having stopped playing. That will bring us to... Don't tell Scott that. <laughs> that will give us to Silas. Silas takes a step towards Falkren and, and attempts to grapple her. I'm sorry, Persephone. And attempts like... to grapple her. All right. Uh, there that will be me? <laughs> an athletics versus athletics or acrobatics. So roll an athletics check, Scott. Silas. Uh, Silas, excuse me. Oh, God. 22. I rolled an eight, uh, eight. total. An eight okay. total. 
It's mm. Persephone's uh, it's a possible way for her to beat it, yeah, or for her to lose. 19. But can so, she continue playing while doing acrobatics? Uh, yes, she can because she did not take her action to. Uh, she did not use this on her action. She just did it as her defense. I mean, so she I sees you coming and continues singing and backs away and does some fancy footwork and does a spin around and is now behind you. Do I have a second attack yet? I don't do it. You do not. How about a bonus action? Bonus action, sure. What is your bonus action? What can I do as a bonus action? Can I, <laughs> can I slap her? Can I grab the strings of her instrument? What, you can. You can. Not, you cannot make any, another attack or anything like that. You cannot. Is, isn't knocking on a door a free action? Can I just knock on the instrument? Sure, <laughs> you can knock on the instrument. If that's really what you what want to do. What should I roll, if anything? Provide. Oh. To knock on her instrument? So free. no, just to disrupt her playing. Uh, you have you have shot your shot. Ah, uh, I'm done then. All right. That brings us to Falkrin. Unfortunately, you just added percussion to the song. So, right now, <laughs> yeah, it's like... All right, so, uh, I, so I look Persephone in the eye and it's just like, think about what you're doing. Is this truly what you want? That was in a six-second rant. Okay. And what... Uh, do you wish to make an action? Any kind of a skill check? An attack? Uh, or to hold an action? I'm uh, so like I'm just gonna like I'm so I imagine as Persephone is sort of like danced away I'm just coming towards her with like my hands up and saying like think about what you're doing is this truly what you want and then like if I get any sort of recognition off of Persephone's eyes here like a she it's up to Persephone you've got two people who are obviously trying to get you to stop was um, that a, was that a persuasion role or something like that or just well, a- the, a persuasion roll would have an effect on an NPC. I can't make a persuasion yeah. roll have yeah. an effect on a PC. It's up uh, to it's up to Persephone. What does she, what does Persephone do? Well, she's singing, so she can't respond to you. But she right uh, because there are words. You need to, to the, keep on singing, you know? yes. Yeah. Um, and so she just kind of goes, but not with her hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The strumming shrug, as it were. Yes. Well, it brings us back to the spider. Hmm, there seems to be a bit of a disagreement. I, I must once again point out how precarious your situation is. I'm trying to do you all a favor. There's no need to get hostile. Have you told You'll find that yet? many of us can be quite equitable, given the proper circumstances. I don't know what that means. It'll bring us to Jack's. He is, appears to be waiting again. Well, I'm dancing. Still looking at you. Oh, right. <laughs> Make a performance check. Oh, God. <laughs> For goblins, this is really good. Oh, an 18. Hey! 18. <laughs> With a minus Fancy one. Footwork. A little bit Damn. of nervous, a little, a little bit of nervous jig happening. And, you know, all of you spare a second to look at Jack, says he. <laughs> dancing around, dancing the, around the imp. Just giving him a little Probably poke now and the again. <laughs> and I'm going to say, have you, you haven't told anyone yet, have you? <laughs> and I'm just poking the imp with my dagger. I'm not, not of course not. Him. We're in negotiation. I would never do such a thing. Yeah, that's my action. Um, and now we're on to Persephone. She finishes the song. Finishes the song. As you finish the song, the paper that you are reading, uh, singing from just <laughs> disappears and it appears in the imp's hand. And he says, Amen. And there's a little bit of a thunder that echoes over the uh, the blood war. And he says, very well. In three days, I will look for you. Four. Four, Four days. Oh, yes, excuse me. I forgot. Four days. Oh, did you I forget that you, easy, did you? And uh, consider this our little secret until then. And he, can I stab the imp yet? Oh, feel free. Oh, yes! You want to stab ah. the imp? <laughs> <laughs> it dies. It looks it looks happy, actually, as you kill it. Finally. And he begins to fly away. <laughs> so I'm just imagining this, like, salacious, crumb-looking imp. That's just exactly like, what he looks like. <laughs> begins to fly away. Uh, which brings us to Silas. I hang my head and assuming that there's no acrobatics, put my hand on 
Persephone's shoulder and say, I really, really hope this works out better for you than it has for me. And I'll do everything I can to make sure of it. Her soul was never promised, correct? Yeah, it was just gold or a, a coin. But the Indeed. problem is, is if I yeah. break it, if I break that contract. If you break the contract, then he tells about the door. He doesn't have your soul. The soul was never part of that contract. No, I think uh, the deal was is he has four days and then... Because if we, so if we pay Oh, he's him, right. The soul was never part of the soul contract. soul was never though. part of the contract. The soul was never part of the contract. That's right. Okay. No, I, so I, I didn't, four I days, didn't, four I, didn't days, I didn't say I hope it works out better for your soul. I just said I hope it works out better. <laughs> in okay. four days, Fair if enough. you have not, if you do not have his payment, then he will inform his superiors about this other way into mm-hmm. Ilterra. Mm. Yeah, and he Next, flies away. I need to borrow some money. <laughs> no. Let's get away from this door before anything else notices. Yes. One final perception check, uh, Jade. Again, because your uh, passive is so high, you can look down and you see in and amongst the fighting one figure with quite a large swath around her, um, long, flaming wings. She is magnificent. She her uh, chained hand is swirling around as it just rips into demons as they're coming en masse towards her. She's just ripping them to pieces as fast as they can come. A large one uh, looking horribly misshapen with two baboon heads and multiple arms like like a uh, millipede comes slithering over. It's about as tall as a, a house and it comes up to her and she just flies up to meet it with this huge hammer that she has. She wraps the chain around its neck several times, bringing it down towards her, and she smashes one of the faces with her hammer and follows it down, and as she does, there's a explosion of hellfire, and as it clears, she's standing in the middle, and there is nothing but ash around her, and still they come, and she turns to look at them, and roars a battle cry, and goes once again into the fray. So it's devils fighting demons, yeah? Indeed. Okay. He turns around and says, I bet she hasn't killed more imps than I have. <laughs> and I'll just walk, <laughs> walk back with the group. So, while all this was happening, we closed the door. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> I love the jump cut to, to Typhus and Rim just being like, Mm-hmm. So, what do you think they're you're o- doing? They're okay, right? They're be fine, right? <laughs> yeah. I yeah, love that we've played fine. 20 sessions and you still get his name wrong. Who? What? Typhon. Oh, Typhon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he could be saying typhoid at this point. <laughs> look, look, I, I don't want to go with how many sessions you guys still think I'm a boy. So, there's that. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, look, look Luke, here F A L K R U U U U N. Hey, Falk, you too, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lulu is busying around helping people, as I'm sure that uh, other uh, Rhea and is also going around and pulling people out from the rubble. It doesn't appear like anybody was seriously injured, but it is definitely uh, unsettled people here. This was the, the largest drop that you felt. And although you were able to make your saving throws, many people were not and fell quite heavily. Um, Rim, what are you and Typhon doing? I guess Rim, what are you doing? And Typhon, what are you doing? I will help. Uh, I will help everyone that's fallen, and uh, you know, just make sure that nobody's hurt. Mm-hmm. As you are doing that, a beautiful blonde woman kneels beside you. I'm sorry, it's Rim, right? Do I know you? Um, I'm a friend of Typhon's. Uh, he likes to keep me a secret, but I'm thinking that we might be spending a bit more time together. I, I don't want to stay cooped up here anymore. I feel like I could be of help. Do you think I could join you all? How odd for you to encounter each other in such a well, place. It is an odd set of circumstances. I'm happy to tell you the story. I but maybe not now is not the time. What is your name? Uh, my name is Islan. Islan. I'll extend a claw to her. She shakes it. Pleased to meet you. Rim? Rim, that is correct. Well, let's see what we can do to help these people. 
uh, as we help, I'm uh, I'm talking with, uh, I, I continue the conversation. How do you two know each other? Well, it's a long story. We were friends in Baldur's Gate. I believe it is more of type one story to tell. If you understand, I, I felt I should approach you and make an introduction, but if I were to tell you the entire story, it would involve compromising some secrets that he is real to me, and I, I don't want to do that. Rim smiles at the, out of the side of his mouth. Yeah, yes, Typhon has not proven to be quite the storyteller. Oh, so I've gotten to know him. You should get him drunk. Hmm. He smiles and uh, continues helping people. So she's um, doing the best she can. She doesn't seem to be all that skilled with medicine, but she's definitely helping helping people. Um, a couple of times you need her to steady a rock as you lift it up, and she's able to do it. She's definitely doing her best to pull her weight. Um, Typhon, you can't fail but notice this. I think... <laughs> I'm just gonna watch just curiously. I'm just, why? Why? You know, why she is um, suddenly taking such an interest in him and just... Observe from a distance. Right. Oh. So after a little while, um, there doesn't seem to be any more of these large resetting drops of El Torel. Uh, Rim rejoins you, as does uh, Islan. She comes over and says, well, I was just talking with your friend Rim, Typhon. Just felt I should get to know my friend's friends. I've not known him to be much of a conversationalist. Well, it goes for you, too. <laughs> you imagine you two get along very well. No? We have an understanding. Mm. Those we really? do tend to make things a little easier. He has proven himself to be a formidable ally. And he puts a claw on your shoulder. The nicest oh, thing anyone's ever said to me, I think. <laughs> At any rate, um, have you told your friends about my little proposition? Not yet. In fact, I've only... Well, I only know a bit of it from you, in fact. So, Rim here can be trusted. He's quite the stoic... Well, very well. Why well, don't perhaps, we go over it once more? Well, perhaps it would be better if we waited until the rest of you... Where are they, by the way? They've uh, wandered down a... S are we near the way apparently. Uh, you can be if you want to. Uh, I will move and try to stick my snout uh, down it to see if I can see You can stick your snout it. down it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what can I see slash Make smell. a perception check. All right. I believe you have advantage because of your favorite enemy. Oh, yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, it's your favorite enemy, goblins. <laughs> <laughs> 21. Uh, 21. You smell brimstone. You smell air that is, it smells like it's been cooked. Um, and the unmistakable scent of devils. Uh, I will I, I will return uh, to type in and say, I think something is wrong. There shouldn't oh, no. be a stench of death coming from the first catacombs. I will go check. Uh, Lulu, maybe oh, she'll be fine. And she flies past you. He tries to grab her. <laughs> make, make it a, make it a she, uh, there's, uh, there's no way. I, yes, no very bad. unlikely. Yeah. Uh, possible. You want to roll for it? I do, actually. Okay. Make uh, a uh, athletics check. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's an 11. She only got a 13. <laughs> but uh, she flies past you. Um, what's your passive? Uh, passive perception is 16. And yours, Typhoon? Um, 10, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, she flies past and goes down, and just for an instant, as you're distracted by her flying down, you see out of the corner of your eye something about Islin 
changes. And when you turn back to look at her, nothing is out of place. But for the briefest moment, it seemed as if she wasn't, as you weren't looking at her fully, it seemed as if her skin went from this um, beautiful alabaster and became gray and dark to almost black. Her blonde hair changed from this long flowing gold to a lighter gold and then silvery and then white. But when you turn to look, it's perfectly normal. And she looks the way she did a moment ago. I will not say anything. Lulu begins to go down the uh, tunnel just as you all are closing the door. Everything okay? The us, right? She's saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Good. What are we going to do now? We need to go back. Okay. I know the way. And she turns around and begins to fly, fall back. Fly back. All right. I follow her. I'll turn to meet it to see you. And eventually she comes bursting out of the, um, out of the tunnel again. And the rest of you, uh, follow her close behind. She flies up to the, uh, to the roof of this tomb and begins to slowly circle it. Just looking down at everybody. Did you hear how the old imp screamed? I'm going to wipe the blood off Falcon's arm. What? Oh, Jax. It was a real Uh. curdling noise. A lot different to the other ones I've killed. So what did you find below? Persephone? Well, there's a door to hell down there, so barricade this and make sure no one goes down. You mean a door to outside? Mm -hmm. Just a door. The passage would have led to a room, we assume, but it broke off when Elturel began to descend, so it just opens up, and we saw hell in all its violent glory. Lots of fighting. Lots of fighting. Devils and demons. Can't tell the difference between them. Only ones who noticed us. And in order to keep his silence about uh, the passageway, someone had to make a deal. What kind of deal? A soul stone or 3,000 pounds. We're British now, guys. Uh, <laughs> Three thousand. Three thousand sterling. <laughs> uh, what is a soul stone? British people don't call it sterling. All right. <laughs> it might be sterling, <laughs> but we don't call it sterling. <laughs> um, if, if a soul stone is a a stone Coin. of a soul, um, a condensed soul into currency, but I think it's important that we don't find one and just make sure that we have 3,000 to pay in four days. What do you get in turn for this? Silence. They won't tell about the passage to the refugees. There were 30 other devils waiting to pounce. Uh, Perhaps this place isn't safe for them regardless. Nowhere here is safe. uh, Yeah, I say, uh, hopefully within four days we can remedy this situation altogether. And make sure that El Torel, or at least the people here, are no longer in hell. But that being said, uh, how much money we got? Well, Typhon owes me a lot of money, so now I'm time to cough up. Have I not specified once we're back on the prime material, Jax? I don't time? know what that is. Well, not yet. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. And this striking blonde woman comes over to you all. Um, my name is Islin Mazonre. Um, I'm a friend of Hello. Typhon's. A friend? I look, I look to Typhon kind of for confirmation. I, he gives a nod. Mm-hmm. How are you here? It's a long story. How are you a friend? <laughs> An even longer story. 
but um, we can get into all that later. I, I believe I overheard you saying you were looking for a way to get the refugees out. Well, yes. I don't, I don't know if there's a way t- to make them safer. Absolutely. Well, I might know of a way. What is it? Well, I just so happen to know of where a possible teleportation circle could be here in Elthorel. Where? Not far. It's in the basement of a place, some sort of potion shop. And it can be used enough times to get everybody out? Well, I'm no mage. I wouldn't know. But better than nothing. Possible, I suppose. I find is that how is that how teleportation circles work? Would I know? Make an arcana check. (laughs) Okay. 17. Okay. <laughs> okay. It depends. You know that there are spells that can teleport, that you can create a teleportation circle wherever you are, um, depending on the materials that you have at your disposal. And if you know the location of a permanent teleportation circle, from what she has described, this sounds like a permanent teleportation circle, in which mm-hmm. case it should be usable and reusable as long as it can be activated. Okay. Do I need to know the location of another teleportation circle in order to use it? Um, the teleportation I need circle... To know the destination. The teleportation circle, it would depend on whether it's set up to be just a generalized teleportation circle or if it has a specific site. Okay. Mm. Wouldn't it need to be a gate if we were in a different plane? That's... You don't know that. No, Jack doesn't know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I love this profound moment. Circles, I was like, like, like a donut. Jack's being like, <laughs> puts on his spectacles. Wouldn't it need to be a gay? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my spell book. <laughs> <laughs> How much intelligence did they give this goblin? You would expect it to be not without risk, type on. Mm-hmm. We have to try. If we can get these people out of the hell plane, then that's one of our main goals. That's what it's, the risk. But and, how do we? Well, it's it's also a potential escape for us if we need to. True. So what? Are, so what are the options for trying to get these people out of hell? Because I don't think we're going to be able to break the chains that are actually pulling El Torel down. They're it's it's massive. We we saw them. It, I don't know of anything that could break it. So we have to get the people of El Torel out. Any suggestions? The teleportation <laughs> circle seems to me something we should at least investigate. Perhaps mm-hmm. we go there first. But what about um, what about uh, Duke Ravencard? He said that he knew of some weapon or, or item in the graveyard. We need to look for him. But How do. close is this potions basement to the graveyard? Well, I'm not that familiar with El Torel. Um, oh, where's, uh, where's Rhea? Oh, and Rhea comes walking over. <laughs> what? Did you have something to say to me, Rhea Mantelmorn? Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> My name is Islam. <laughs> <laughs> and thus begins Sean's descent into hell. <laughs> it just goes on and on. Rhea comes walking over. Well, did you all feel that that um, that big shake? Oh no. yeah. Yeah. Are you all right? I'm fine. Are you? And and the refugees are they are they? Uh, scared. Really tired. Dirty. Well, we've. They are uh, dirty. Did, didn't we ask last time if she knew where the cemetery was that Raven Guard was, and she didn't? But have we asked anyone else? Um, Faria probably would know. Hmm. And okay. Rhea might know well enough as long as somebody. You know, after asking a few people at Rhea, she, she makes the, a few connections between streets that she knows and landmarks that she knows okay. she nods her head and says yes right oh right there is a of course that's a that's a large one that's a very very large 
graveyard. I, that must be the one they're talking about. Would you mind describing the location from here? Um, well, it's close to the wall. It's in this area of El Terrell. Um, here. I found this. Mark it on she our pulls map. out a map. We've got a map. Oh, no, we've got a map of Avernus, haven't we? And she points out that it is here. Are you able to see me pinging? Yes. And I was too zoomed in. Can you do it again? Yep. And um, Islin, as she does that, she says, "Ah, yes." And I think that the the potion shop is somewhere over here. And we're there. So it's like a little triangle. Not precisely out of the way, but er, on the way, but not the opposite direction, at least. I think we should scout out the teleportation circle on our way to the cemetery. That was to be my proposition as well. All right. Wonderful. All right. I'll come with you, of course. Please. Generous. Thank you very much. And I, I say sort of under my breath, but not necessarily so she can't hear to Typhon and we can trust your friend. As much as you can trust me, Persephone. Oh, everyone that joins our group's got to pay 500 gold. <laughs> Goblins. No, I'm serious. We need to find 3,000 gold. Oh, well. <laughs> the city is at your disposal. I'm sure you'll be able to find anything that you want. Every shop is open for business, as it were. Yeah. She has a point. Maybe as we go along, we can... I haven't been looting in ages. You loot all the time. Yeah, I find that very hard to believe. Jack. It's been at least a few hours. Oh yes, okay, that makes yes. Silas, what are you up to? Uh, nothing much at the moment. Just uh, observing and being really paranoid about being in hell. Fair. Um, right. you feel us. Breeze on the back of your neck. You're standing apart from the group a little bit. <laughs> Hello. Is that Lulu then? It is. Ah, <laughs> uh, Lulu, I thought you were someone else for a moment. Hmm. Well, I'm not. Tell me, Lulu, have you ever heard the name? Lassia. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. If you hear that name, please let me know. Will do. That's the most you've ever said to me. You're generally gone before I can speak. You're very fast, Lulu. Yeah. You think I should slow? No, I think you should be yourself. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> and gone. So, right. conscript group 14 plus Islin, what do you do? We're going to head out, make our way towards the elixir shop, and then make our way to the Grand Cemetery. There have been All a right. couple people that we've spoken to that are almost like kind of leaders, but have we identified like this is the person in charge of the refugees? Uh, mm -hmm. Feria would be that person. Um, she has the most um, authority as far as you can tell, although she is at the very end of her chain. Um, there is also Einjamin, who Silas has spoken with. Seems to be a little bit more on an even keel, but is more focused on making sure that devils and other creatures do not come in, as opposed to actually leading the group. So, I quickly turn the group and say perhaps we tell our plan uh, to the others and warn them of the 
of the gate uh, of the hallway below on the off chance we can't come back? I mean, if truthfully in any way, shape, or form that they can sort of barricade that off, it, it, would, it serves no purpose for them. It will only, if it does become revealed, be a source. So I think we should take some of the rubble that they've used to barricade the doors, uh, the other hallways, and barricade that as well. So informing them seems the wisest choice. I would actually caution against that plan of action. You've got two people at the end of their ropes, and what good can they do having that information ahead of time? You might incite panic. If you're confident that that contract is going to last for four days, best to give them hope for escape well, and do our best to get them there. Rim, we need not inform them of the dire situation, but we can say to them that that passageway is dangerous and needs to be sealed off. Fair compromise. Rim nods. I also think we should be intentionally vague as to our specific plans. Mm, yes. Yes. Mm. I say we. I say we tell them that we're seeking out Duke Ravengard, which I imagine would be some relief to them, as they would be welcome to see him returned. And just leave it at that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if this teleportation circle serves to be a, a dead end, no sense in giving them hope where there is none. Would you like me to dismantle this this lock? Yes, Jax. Can you do that? You've got to find it first. <laughs> oh, oh. Don't worry. I'll, uh, give me a second here. Rim is going to try to uh, scoot Persephone away from the group while he's while Jax is doing that. Mm -hmm. I saw something. It's over here, right, Jax? What did you see? I don't know if it's a concern or not, but... I don't think Islin is who she appears to be. I saw her shift in some manner out of the corner of my eye. He trusts her. Typhon trusts her, but just be wary. Do you think Typhon expects her to be some sort of shapeshifter, or that we should warn him in case he thinks this is his blonde friend? If I can find a way to pull him aside, I will tell him the same, but I wanted to tell you first. Okay. Well, for now, we'll treat her as an ally and keep an eye on her. Agreed. Anybody else have anything they wish to do? I'm still trying to find the trap door on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna... <laughs> Come on. Roll it. <laughs> no. You just walked out of it, and it's right. Yeah. So, what am I? What am I rolling here, Sean? Uh, investigation. Best investigation, of course. Of Negative course. six. Hey! Uh, <gasps> still, wow. not, it's still not high enough though, because I had to roll oh, a lot higher to find it. <laughs> I'm gonna Dear. say that because he already has been out of it. <laughs> yes. but that is high enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing there pointing at it. <laughs> it does my heart good. So. Yes, you think you might finally be getting the hang of these strange human constructions. Um, anybody? So, who wishes to speak to whom? I will. Uh, I will pull tight. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You first. No, no I'll, I'll speak to. Oh God, I keep butchering her name. Uh, Fia, Farah. Fia, Faria. 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 So, right. I, will, I will. I will speak to her about our intentions. She nods. Well, that, that's that, that's good. Um, yes, we, we, if things had gone well, he would have been back within a day. But now it's it's approaching the end of the third. I'm afraid that something terrible has happened. Well, so as soon sure as you can, can just uh, just come back to us. No, of course, of course, we will do everything we can to find the Duke. And also, I wanted to advise you about the said the potential hazard of the. Oh. Trap door over there. Don't God. worry, we, we've 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 destroyed. I have Jax take a look at the lock, make sure it can can't be opened again. But oh, I say would would be good just to keep a few eyes on it. Oh, and also, I was wondering. I I noticed the weapon you carry is n not of any real quality. Would you, would you like the best this? I could find? No, of course. Uh, and then I, I show her. I've got a a plain warhammer just in my pack. 
you hand it to her and she's oh, she can barely lift it this is no warrior i i think i'm i'm fine with with mine um what well, i mean how, I, to be perfectly about, honest if i had I, to wield I, it and if i had to actually hit anything with it i'd well it would already about, be too late would would a hand axe be helpful then maybe that instead i just cut myself I, I appreciate, I appreciate what all of you are willing to do, and I know that the people here appreciate all that you're doing. Well, thank you. We really you are do doing, need you here. Uh, we, which is why we will can. return with all haste. And there may yet be more survivors. Mm -hmm. We will look. We will indeed. You have my word. Thank you. No, thank you. You're doing a fine job. Be safe. We will return. May Tom guide your steps. And may all martyr give you ease of mind. She nods and goes to see about doing some sort of busy work. You see her walking around, attending to various people. and You can see that she's not doing anything specific, but the fact that she is one person standing and moving and talking to people, whereas so many have collapsed or are huddled around braziers and um, weeping. It does seem to have a steadying effect on the group. Um, do you wish to examine any part of the catacombs on your way out? Do you wish to explore any other part of the cathedral? Or do you want to just go out? Do you want to check that room with the giggles? Yeah. We We're under a time pressure. Should we just go? Um... Well, uh, I would honestly like to take uh, the hour and get the Stone of Transference from Rim. See if I can't uh, fancy up a rapier for Persephone. So a short, so a short rest. If just if, for an if, hour, yeah. If the group is amenable to that, just to sort of figure out what other supplies we need, and then would have probably been done probably done that anyway wouldn't we oh we did that yeah. over the rest but yeah uh yeah. over the long rest i would have said surely uh yeah. well we we did mention it um it, because it takes an hour and you had your eight hour long rest if you had done it again then whoever had done it would have not gotten the full long rest exactly yeah that was the yeah that was the kicker is that because we had already done it so, so. if you want to take a short rest now in order to do it you may I think it's worth it. I would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're. Attack. Um, especially now that I have two attacks that with it. Um, what are we waiting for? Uh, I just have to make this rapier even more awesome really quick. Well, I will dismantle the trap. The door. All right. Uh, yeah. roll, um, I will. With the hour, I don't need you to roll, Jack. You're able to jam the door shut. It and will be very difficult to open it now. Instead of um, using a trap what, lock, you, you put the dagger in and you press a button and it just, it'll just ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what are you um, transferring to um, Persephone's rapier? All right, so I'm going to use uh, my plus one Warhammer of Torm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to transfer that to Persephone's rapier, which would give it the plus one quality. And then I believe it also gets uh, the light can trip. Tell me about your rapier. Test. It's just a second. regular rapier. So at the end of the hour, as you are preparing to do this, you release the energy in the stone and it you, you feel it move into the rapier, but then it doesn't take. It moves back into the stone and then back into your hammer. The rapier is of not sufficient quality to accept the enchantment. <sighs> nice try. Damn. We well, knew that. I had it well, a long Persef time, so... Well, Persephone, we need to find you just better weapons all around. Eh, well, let's go. Maybe we'll find one out there. It's true. Jack so gets up what all is excited. We're going looting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as you are... Uh, one moment here while I get my tokens all situated. As you are doing this, eventually Islan comes up to you, but 
she has disappeared she disappeared for a while and she's come back and she's dressed completely differently I have a whole wardrobe down here do you <sighs> just a little trick <laughs> well, hopefully you've got a few more of those up your sleeves It would astonish you what I have of these things. Hmm. <laughs> Raise my eyebrow. Look at Typhon. The same. <laughs> we, the whole party All just of goes, us. <laughs> he just he just shrugs and nods. <laughs> I do I do appreciate you all letting me join you this way. Um, we thank you very much for the potential lead to a, a way out. Well, it's very kind. certainly something I couldn't have taken care of on my own, so I am being a little bit self-serving. Too dangerous to go out by myself. But It is dangerous to go alone. <laughs> well said. Take this. Shall we? Do, 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 do. Off we go. Into the spider's net. Uh, Rhea. Uh, yes? Have you given any further thought? to the weapon of the unknown hero? Well, I've, I've been thinking about it quite a lot, actually, but it just doesn't seem right. No. I would ask for no better guide than your heart. So I know that we are in a difficult spot right now and any aid that we could take, we should, but if you do not feel it is right, then... I mean, I if it is truly as powerful as the legends say, then that might be a sort of power that one can only wield once. Mm. And I don't know that I'm ready for that. Well, then Hell Rider, let's go back to Hell. Oh, she don't worry, your us, time will come. I mean, yeah, Rey is coming with us, right? Yeah. She is. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so you're a quite a merry band as you crawl out underneath the rubble that has been piled to barricade this part of the catacombs. You return to the staircase. You find the lever that makes the uh, opening slide back. You climb the narrow stairs up into the cathedral next to the uh, offering palm there. Looking around, you see still the stinking, smoldering, and rotting bits and pieces of human, elven, and devil corpses. You carefully make your way past all of the frescoes depicting the horrible scenes of temptation, past the large statues of this massive, angelic, slash devilish figure holding aloft this sword. You exit the front steps of the cathedral. Looking around, doesn't seem to be anything in the area at the moment. Uh, when we approach the door of the cathedral, is this light of the companion still seeming to be oppressively beating down that caused the fear effect before? The light of the, the, the fear effect was actually caused by the flying fortress. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you step out, you look up and you see that it is no longer next to the companion. Cool. So as you step out and you look trepidatiously up into the air, you see only the dark, crackling energy hanging suspended above the city. All right. Follow me. And Islin begins to move ahead of the group. And as she turns a corner, you lose sight of her. You follow where she went, and just because. None of you can see her. Huh. Know that she Typhon, she, she does understand what follow me. me like Jax, do you have eyes on her? She's here somewhere. Let's keep going to our destination. What? She's adept at this. Perhaps even more than our Jax here. 
I will hang back and see if I can get Typhon to walk at the back of the group with me so I can talk to him. It appears that uh, Rim wishes to get your attention, Typhon. I will hang back a bit. And... She wouldn't tell me of your friendship. How well do you know her? Mm. Well, she's the... She's the person in this city I've known the longest. If there's... She could call her such, she is indeed my oldest friend. I saw when we were in the catacombs. She shifted. I don't believe she's showing us her true visage. Not unlike I've seen you shift during moments of battle. Mm, your eyes do not deceive you. You're quite perceptive. She... Maybe even the environment itself getting her guard down. I'm not sure what form it was that she flickered to that she showed you, but she's able to take a few. So don't let it worry you. You trust her then? I do. Then I'm quite certain you. it's her. Rim will nod and uh, and just keep walking. All right. Very well. Stepping around the corner at the end of the alleyway, you see her step back and motion you all forward. You creep down the alleyway. The sounds of battle can still be heard. Every now and then you hear an explosion or a roar. It sounds like it's actually coming from the city. But... For the most part, it pales in comparison to the carnage and chaos that you know is going on below you at this very moment. Jax. You are... Go ahead. Jax, try to keep your ears open. See if we can't find any more survivors. Uh, this in this carnage, I doubt that there are many, but we're our best chance of finding them if they are there. It pokes his ears just to make sure they're not blocked. We'll carry on. Okay. Um, you're beginning to move through a more affluent section of town. You, you come down from the hill upon which the high hall was built, moving through more blasted streets, ru uh, ruined buildings, rubble sp uh, splayed out all along your path. Uh, you see occasionally uh, Islin hopping from stone to stone, stopping for a moment, holding her hand up for you all to be quiet, and then moves forward. Typhon, you hear in your head, so do they trust me? Um, I will... I suppose it's a bit early to tell. They trust me. And I have vouched for you. So, as much as they have faith in me, they will put faith in you. Well, it would be nice to think that this will work for all of those survivors, but I highly doubt it. Just so you're not disappointed. It's worth looking. Fair enough. And, and I will also say, know. be and, Go ahead. and be cautious. This method of communication can be eavesdropped upon here. So there's no response because it, it's a it's a, not a it's not a double it's not a two way communication. <laughs> so she says her thing and then you say your thing, but yeah, she doesn't respond. So she appears to have learned. Um, you're moving through, as I said, a more affluent area, or what was at one point a more affluent area. Shops, dresses, uh, one or two gem stores. Um, the uh, You pass a, a bookstore that looks uh, like it might be of particular interest. But eventually you come to... Actually, a, I, yeah. as we pass the gem store, uh, Rim is going to kind of tap uh, Persephone on the shoulder and say 
might we find 3,000 gold in here? Jax is already in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn to ask Jax to help loot, and then I can't find him, and then realize he's already in there. He's like, well. He's got his glasses and on. Jax, anything, anything worth. Uh, you make an investigation check. Settling our debt with. This is a good time for a natural 20. Seventeen. Seventeen. Well, it has been picked over. Somebody has gotten here before you. Um, and the larger uh, supplies of gemstones are gone. However, underneath some rubble, you do find a tiara that has some beautiful stones in it, including, in the very center of it, a fairly large diamond. Oh. <gasps> well, oh. I, if power. that's all I found, I will walk out with it on my head. <laughs> uh, no, didn't find much. Oh, Jax, that is lovely. If I may, and I'm just going to snap the diamond off the top of it. <laughs> um, Hold on to this. Okay, you have a diamond. Nothing else worth anything in, on it. Uh, well, that was definitely what probably was worth the most. But you do have this tiara. It's still pretty. It needs to be made out of um either gold or platinum, and there are some gemstones still attached to it. Oh, it's, a um, gift. It's, it's a gift for Shora, so he puts it in his bag. Oh, right. he's nice. cutest. Um, after seeing you take that, uh, um, Falcon, Rim comes to you and says, uh, the boy you saved, the thing that you destroyed in saving him, it pained you to do so. It was my dowry given to me by my father when I informed him that I would not wed. Well. You did a good thing with it. <laughs> I did. And it certainly paid for more than it ever could in this life. So. Rim smiles at you and just gives you a bit of an elbow bump. <laughs> Just my, on, um, sorry, go. Persephone is also keeping an eye out for anything that used to look like a smithy or an armory or anything like that. Just Make a perception walk. check. Just while she's doing that, how much is that tiara worth, just so I know? Uh, uh, just a moment. And any intelligent people here, how do you spell tiara? T I A R A. <laughs> Um, P A L A N. So <laughs> minus minus the diamond, it's worth three hundred gold pieces. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I like writing all the little knickknacks he finds. Uh, Nineteen. Oh, you do pass a uh, weaponsmith job. I Nicely done. Definitely go in to see if there is anything more than just the average sword and dagger. So there is quite a lot of average weaponry that is over embellished um, do you have familiarity uh, with uh, blacksmithing uh, red, or, or uh, fair gear hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> are you are you, are you uh, <laughs> proficient in anything that would allow you to know whether or not a weapon was of particularly fine quality or not um as an actor, she would know uh, a blunt <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stagecraft <No>. weaponry. <laughs> yeah, Tess could probably tell, but so it's a, you know it's a difference. You're, you're looking at it and you're seeing a bunch of things that you know it's it's a classic um, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. You're looking for the the yeah. blade that is actually a quality made weapon, as opposed to one that is adorned and got all kinds of filigree and stuff like that. So um, roll a percentile. <gasps> Lower is always oh. better. She could probably low, find one low, that's really low, nicely balanced low, if low. she's proficient, right? Kind of swing them around. Yeah. Well, they're all they're all they're all passable. <laughs> they're all passable. Um, unfortunately, you you definitely find some that you would think would definitely make you cut a much more impressive figure. Um, as to whether or not they are of high enough quality to accept magic imbuement, it's hard for you to tell. All right. Then she moves along. No armor. Um, well, this was a weapons store. Okay. As you come out, 
you see standing on the top of a, a pile of rubble, uh, Yislin looking all back at you all. I mean, I mean, I'm all for it, but don't we have more pressing things to do? Actually, weirdly, no. This is one of the more pressing things we have to do. Fair enough. How can I help? We need 3,000 gold by four days from now. That's hefty stun. Mm -hmm. What you need is a hidden cache. I would recommend searching a house like that. And she points at one of the uh, nicer ones. Very beautiful facade. Lots of uh, filigree on the outside. Um, approaching gaudiness. Oh, let me but, go and have uh, a look. Still there, within the um, realm of tastefulness. <laughs> I'll go and have a look. But um, it might not be easy to find. It might take a while. Need it. It's to save the lives of everybody that we just left behind. Very well. This one's eyes are surprisingly good. Typhon gestures towards Jax. And Persephone, you're looking for something to accept magic, yes. No, that's secondary, but yeah, I'm always looking for that. I've seen the way your blade seems to dull upon the flesh of those you stab. I uh, wouldn't call that anything, any, I wouldn't say, call that secondary. We need you sharp. But would I be able to, like, use my arcana knowledge or anything to try and find a weapon of particular fine make, something that might accept magic or something like that? Make an arcana check. Seventeen. All right. Now roll percentile. Do, do, do. Like a four. Are we still in the shop? Are we? Can I currently? Uh, some of the, some of you are still them? in the shop, and the rest of you and you are now in the thing. Um, low is good, right? Low is good. Yeah, but that's not that low. <laughs> that's not low enough, I'm afraid. Ah. Can um, I investigate for anything? Any hidden weapons in there? Oh, it was uh, four. It was forty-eight. I thought I was. I was looking at the seventeen still. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Forty-eight is not quite low enough. Um. All right, uh, so Jade, you said you were investigating the house for gold, or oh, I, I thought that was I thought we would all be going over there, but uh, um, yeah, if if not, then well, you can all. It's we up to you all. Do you or... wish to move as a group, or do you wish? Yes. No, it is. Yeah, if we're moving as a group, then he would have been in the shop and helping. Okay, yeah, I'll investigate yeah, investigate for anything. You know, like they all sort right. of like they hide the best ones off the shelf. And... They do that at Target too. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, 24. Is anybody not in the shop? I am waiting I'll outside. My, I'll have my Silas is guarding outside. outside. So I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm standing by Jax, and so if he's looking through weapons, I don't know if I can give him an assist on that, but... Uh, well, he, he, yeah, he's got a thing. So 24. 24. Um, there don't appear to be any hidden caches of weapons. Um, what you see is what you get in this okay. store. Some of them are definitely beautiful and are, uh, the hilts are made of um of precious metals with some gem inlaid that sort of thing so you can find uh, a couple of daggers a pair of daggers actually which would serve as perfectly serviceable daggers but are probably worth quite a bit more than an average dagger do i need to roll a percent on? no with a 24 investigation you right. find that is what you find looking for something specific yeah. is about more about the chances that the particular oh, okay. weaponsmith happened to have thought, you know what? Today I'm going to make an amazing rape. So any, yeah. so yeah, so any of those daggers potentially can take magic. Um, all right, they are definitely of intrinsic value. Okay, roll a percentile. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They are perfect, perfectly serviceable, but they don't seem to have been crafted with any particular care towards creating a matrix for okay. uh, accepting the weave. So how, um, how much is this fancy dagger worth? Two fancy daggers. The pair of them are worth 100 gold. Okay. Thank you. Rim is standing outside with Silas. And Rim, he... you hear from a building... A few 
houses down. It's a slightly different look than these large, beautiful townhouses. This has still a very well-constructed architecture, but it doesn't seem to be a house. Some other sort of building. There's a... And you see the front door of it. Moving. I gesture to Silas and point to the door. Silas, you have been made aware of a door. I see a door. (laughs) The door is... There seems to be something inside it, banging against it, causing it to shudder and shake. Um, I will uh, quietly call into the store. Um, You're not alone out here. At that, I walk out. Yeah, I walk back out of the store with my with quietest drawn. All right. What do you? I'll go to the door and see if I can listen for any voices breathing. Grunting, screeching, squawking. How far away is it, John? Um, it's thirty feet away. Oh, it's really close. Okay. Can you please make a perception check, Silas? I back Silas up. That is a roll of natural hey. twenty. Hey, hey. where this what? is what you hear. You hear multiple voices. I look back at Rim, who what I would assume would be the closest. Falcon's backing you up, actually. Falcon has got closest. Okay, then I'll I'll just hold up my hands and count out one, two, three. Mm. And then I'm going to open the door. All right. You open the door and you are buried in an avalanche of the trouble small with triples. bodies. <gasps> just and as they fall and as you fall on you and as you fall prone and they are on top of you you feel grasping and crawling and and you look and you see children but their faces are torn and ripped you see maggots crawling from their mouths you see eyes that have been uh, eaten out by rats you see long fingernails and they are clawing and biting at you let me grab you all from wherever it is you are. Shut the door. Closing. <laughs> yeah, I was door. waiting for that. Yeah, we're close not close the door. Yeah, we're not closing no. that door. It's a lubberkin. Let's see. If I got everybody. I've got a lot of um got a, a lot of tokens to grab from yeah, various people. Right. If you could, um, if you could vamp for me, folks. How does one sleep after that description? Oh, I know, right? God, yeah. Yeah, it's so, pretty vile. Uh, so I think you guys have got time to forget about it. I'm going straight to bed after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, I struggle with regular children, so the idea of uh, of maggot of, children, of, of maggot children, <laughs> uh, it's about Can the we- same, actually. Can we talk about <laughs> can we talk about Silas like nailing the perception check on that one only to then be covered in dead kids? It's just like <laughs> That's that's what Silas gets for his critical like, role. Oh, he, yeah. He knew they were there. <laughs> and in, in hell, even critical roles are bad. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh goodness gracious. All right. I'm going to move you to where I think you are. Based on I'm, that's not what I'm you at. I'm not there. Described. You're not there. You're, you can't I'm see not, where you are. That's not where I'm at. You don't Move know where I'm putting you. <laughs> I am not covered with maggot children. <laughs> Put me in a corner. <laughs> Ever the contrarian. That's a all good right. Halloween I I have I need, I need I need a I need a big giant beefy character to come pull baby out of the corner. 
Rim, won't you come save me? I'm working on it, buddy. I'm a baby won't you come save hey. me, Rim. <laughs> well, you've got Falcon. Whoa! <laughs> you oh, goodness a lot, gracious! You a lot. <laughs> so, uh, let's babies. see here. All right, we will roll initiative. All right. Jack should be weird for Oh, I just, I just have to say, I just got a, I got my second critical roll in a row for perception and initiative. This means I'm going to hit nothing this battle. Yep, yep. And actually, um, Silas, now that I've seen where you are, I'm going to actually put you in and amongst the In zombies. the babies! Yeah, that's good. In the mega babies. Right there. <laughs> that's a good band name. In Maggie. the babies, is he, is he prone amongst he them? Prone, or yes, just he them? is prone. You are prone. You I'm are prone. covered with, you don't know how many zombie children. Zildren. Zildren. <laughs> Zombids. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, at the top of the order, we have Cyrus. I'm going to try to not be prone. All right. You stand up as you do they sort of are falling off of you um, and bits and pieces of their skin and flesh are sticking to you as they sort of slide off of you sort of as if you're stepping up out of a mud puddle and they just are grasping trying to climb you trying to find a way into your armor and sink their fingertips into your flesh you are now standing all the, after all the trouble I went to find the prone, <laughs> I, got, I already had it. <laughs> you're, now, you're now standing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm no longer prone. You are no longer prone. There's two versions of you on the map, Falcon. If that's what you're worried about. Yeah, no, I'm because I'm trying to put myself in the turn order, and it's just not letting me do it. If you click on, make sure it's highlighted, then roll. Yeah, right. That'll do it. Uh, do you need me to? I see you at a and 15. Then, oh, no, no. I, I My first one was a 1. So, ah. that's a... Uh, all right. So, much as I would love a 15. Silas, you have stood. What do you do? Going to disengage. All right. So, you... And you try to move out of it. You cannot. You no. cannot move into an opponent's space. You can take the dodge action, which okay. will give everybody disadvantage on their attacks against you. Are... Uh, are they looking like they're going to attack, or are they just flopping about? I mean, I opened a door; they came down. They came, they came flying out like a wave. Uh, you bit, know, I, I did the whole. I'm in an airline. I opened up the overhead bin. Exactly. I was attacked by <laughs> giant fur coats. They, uh, but yeah. I don't know yeah. that they're actually attacking. They are attacking. They just happens. haven't. I'm just they going just to haven't kill gotten. Them. They haven't gotten. They haven't gotten their act together yet. But I guarantee that by the time we get to initiative 14, they will have. Okay, then I'm going to attack the one, assuming that I was facing the door, I fell back, I got up, I'm going to face the one directly to the north of me on the map. Mr. Red. And yes, Mr. Red. Thanks. For 22 to hit. 22 is a hit. I'm lucky I didn't have disadvantage or anything. That is an eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Magical. Magic damage. Dance the magic colors. damage. I don't have enough colors, so that's okay. um, use the colors that we have to say I hit the one next to or behind and that sort of thing. That will help. So you hit twenty-two for how much damage again? Eight points. Eight points. Thank you. Mm. Waver babies. Next up, we have Persephone. All right. Um, with the squares, I'm a little confused how far away I am. Like, um, you can use the um, this. There you go. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Uh, going to move to here, and then I'm gonna shoot the red one. Uh, uh with my crossbow. With the eight to hit. Eight, I'm afraid, does not hit. All right, I'm gonna try again. Oh wait, I'm so it. sorry. It does hit. An eight I does hit. Maybe if they. Woo! Would... So sorry. Eleven non-magical. 
11 points of damage. The uh, the slash from uh, Silas cut through part of the little arm on this child, probably was no older than eight or nine, and the arrow comes and hits that same arm, and it's just dangling by a tendon. But it's still up. Like, it's still up. Standing. All right, then I'll take my second shot at it as well. Oh, uh, nine. That is a hit. Uh, for five damage. For five damage. I need to roll a constitution check. The arm falls off, but continues to flop towards Silas. It starts climbing up his leg as the other aerial hits and completely knocks off the arm from the zombie. That will bring us to Jax. Uh, okay. Um, it's like Silas could use a hand. <laughs> I will move to here and I will shoot yellow. You're, you're the literal worst person. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Shoot yellow. Here we go. Uh, 26 to hit. 26 does hit. Well, 20 damage. 20 damage. A massive blow from your short bow goes right through its sternum and clean out the back, leaving a gaping hole. <laughs> does, does it hit Silas then? Does not hit Silas. It, it does hit Silas, but it's lost enough momentum so that just falls off of his um, his uh, armor. Okay. Can't believe you. That's me done. Alright. Then we are on to Rhea. Rhea, let's see. Runs forward and attacks Mr. Yellow. She is using it one-handed hits and hits so she manages to finish off this one except mm, no so um the oh, thank uh, God. the arrow that passed through it and she comes in with her sword and sticks it in this child is just like oh, turns away and then brings her sword straight up and bifurcates it and two pieces fall to the side. Small, barely walking toddler. That one is no more. Which will bring us to... He takes four sad damage. Which brings us to Typhon. Um... There's a lot going on here. Um, I'm going to not taking too much to go down so if one moves I, i'm going to hold an action mm -hmm. to cast use the thorn whip spell if one moves here and blocks silas's retreat i'm going to use thorn whip to try and pull it out you know waiting till they've all sort of completed their move and when they end if they're still in a clump i want to pull one out so that silas has an escape route from very good does that make sense? It does. Okay. So let me remove Mr. Yellow there. All right. That will bring us to Islin. Islin takes a few steps back. Let's see. She can't really break line of sight with any of them from there. So she will actually run to here and look for cover in the rubble. And she will roll her stealth. Okay. And she shoots with a short bow. Uh, sorry, a um, hand crossbow. Ooh, that's a good point. What is the range on a hand crossbow? 30, I think. Is it 30? Oh, she's 35 feet away. Well, she can't do that. 
Now she'll just roll a disadvantage. If they're really easy to hit. Yeah, she hit. Doing quite a bit of damage. She won't get sneak attack. She will not get sneak attack. So this, uh, she hits the one here to the east of orange. The bolt comes striking out and hits it right in the head. Doesn't seem to have phased it at all. It continues to attack. I'm so scared for this next turn. All right. That brings us to the zombies. Typhon, you did attack, right? You did not take the dodge action? No. Uh, not Typhon. Uh, si si Silas, oh, okay. you, did, you did attack? I, I recall that you did. So, uh, yes, one zombie does move into that spot, so take your attack, uh, your held action. Okay. 17 to hit. That is a hit. Nine piercing damage. Nine piercing damage. And I will elect to pull it 10 feet closer to me. All right. It comes 10 feet total. Yes. So <laughs> these black tendrils of energy comes snaking past you, Persephone, and you see him reach out and grab a hold of one of these children just as it's about to jump onto Silas's back and it pulls it out of the air. And as it does so, it sort of begins to crush and pierce its body as she comes and just drops it right in front of you. That will bring us to the zombies. All of the zombies attack Silas. One, two, six, seven. All right, the highest I rolled was a 22. That misses. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> Five points of bludgeoning damage. Five points bludgeoning, thank you. you know, uh, from the one that just the arm, you know, you managed to fend off all the ones that are crawling for you and trying to bite at you, but you failed to notice this arm that was crawling up your torso, and as it reached your neck, it grabs a hold of your uh, throat and begins to squeeze. That it's will bring us so to much. Rim. Okay, um, with the first turn, I've got 40 feet, so I'm going to move uh, to here, um, and I'm going to use my breath weapon on this gigantic chunk of children. Very good. Uh, this is my first time doing the drag and drop with the spell. Uh, if I do that, that'll get everybody but Silas. Is that right? Well, the point here will need to be you. Uh, I, how do I, how do I, this is my is first time manipulating. It it's a little thing like this. You see it up at the top? There's a little. I do. There you go. All right. That should, no. Oh. Ah, uh, not, I don't want to hit Silas. Okay, I'll do no, these if five. If you do it from, oh, okay. All right, those uh, five. Or if you think I can get the six. It's I, a 50, I, it's, it's a 15 foot cone. So it's 15 feet long. And either, so three squares on either side, and then three squares in the front. So you get six of them. No, I think you can get six. Okay, we'll yeah. do that. Uh, yeah. I, I can't manipulate it's, it. Yeah, it's because it's, uh, uh, there good. we go. There we go. All like right. That. Excellent. Uh, so I will do that and uh, roll that damage. And they need to roll Fine, what kind of a could, save? We could use our templates. Yeah, using, that's yeah. what I was just. Um, I'm trying to. It's I'm a deck to, save, I right? Use this in such a long time. Um, it is. The zombies get deck saves. Did it come up? Yeah, it's there. Yeah. You can click on the highlighted numbers. Ah, thank overall. you. Okay. Uh, so if you're oh, six 3D6 level. at 6 level. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, really? big numbers. This is a yeah, deck hey. save, right? Yeah. It is a deck save. Um, 8 plus con mod plus proficiency. Big time fails. Isn't on it, those, isn't on it all of the deck on the saves. ancestry? Is it, is it cold? Oh. It is cold. I'm, silver is uh, cold. Yep. Yeah. So this gout of cold, freezing air comes shooting out over all these children who... <laughs> You hear a wide route, uh, uh, range of uh, screams and cries and growls and snarls from all of these children. Looks like the oldest is probably maybe 12. 
right in front of you, Rim, is a girl with long hair hanging in her face, and you breathe right on her, and the hair freezes and begins to crack as she tries to keep moving. Um, she is the only one who saved, so what is the damage? Uh, it's ten. And if you save, it's half? It's half. All right. Um, and that's one attack, is that correct, Sean? Um, no, that is that that is an action. It says to, it, it says it, one action, right? Uh, it's I have multiple attacks in my first. I have three attacks in my first. Yes, turn. but in order to use your attacks, you have to use you have to attack. You have to use. Ah, uh, okay, so that's a different. Move. That's a different. Yes. Okay, then that's the uh, then that's the end of my turn. So let me just take care of all this damage that you have bestowed upon the children. <laughs> Could have been just a I just little bit to higher. Say, we've actually like- hit 1,400 view, uh, followers tonight. 1,400 oh. followers! Hey! Hooray! Thanks, Thanks everyone. It's inspiration. Enjoy oh, our I get babies as a treat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Enjoy us killing it the just, chunks of children. It just took a wave of dead babies, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> 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 I hate math. All right. Yeah. That will bring us to um, Lulu. I just, yes! as, right right before she does something, I'm like, be careful, Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> she comes zooming in, and she is inspired by what she saw Rim to. Hey, that was great. And let's see here. Where is her special thing? Glitter snot on the magazine. Glitter but you snot. have to make the noise. I, oh, I will. Oh, I will, Jerry. <laughs> Trump put a Eddie. flashing sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> she comes. To me. I can't wait. Eddie. <laughs> I want half damage. Let's see. Okay. She stands there. And oh. just. How? And these sparkles of gorgeous little energy comes shooting out of her trunk. This noise echoes out throughout the city as she blasts all of these zombie children. Oh, children? That's terrible! (laughs) Yes, yes it is. Uh, Let's see here. So that was... Oh, no, let's see. Vamp it. Boom, 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 Man, boom, so a lot of she's, rolling. She's totally so, snot a goblin. <laughs> so from one side, it's just like frozen icy blizzard breath. So now we have like kidsicles. And then Snot-sicles! on the other side. Snot sickles! Snot sickles! It's not, it's, it's sparkle. <laughs> it's sparkle. Sparkle so, snot sickles. You know what so happens. Those, Oh boy! It's funny you say that because we used to call our subs snot goblins, and then people were saying, "Oh no, it's disgusting!" So we changed it. So we changed it to twitchlin. I prefer snot goblins as our subs. Snot goblins. goblins. I am not surprised that you prefer. Have you guys ever done that? Those of you who live north of the Mason Dixon, have you ever been outside and like that, like sub zero temperatures, and you sneeze, and then it just like it's it's you can break it off. Like it's it's a literal obstacle that's happened. Although you're in Fargo for four years, you'd get like crust on your eyebrows, Mm. yeah, (laughs) or like your eyelashes free shut a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Is this worse than the maggot babies? Oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm so, some yes. of them, some of them, uh, it's radiant damage, so they do not get a saving throw, um, and it manages to kill off the one that was to your north, Silas, and uh, the one here that is to the west of the orange, and the rest are still up. Even the ones that I weakened? Oh, crap. So wait, damn wait, 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 wait. Thank you. Well, well said. Purple is also dead. She was not able to get all of them from where she was. Oh. Um, and that will bring us to Falkrin. Fantastic, Sean. I'd like to channel divinity and destroy undead. Very oh, you can destroy true. now. Nice. Yeah. Roll what you need to roll. Uh, I don't think I roll anything for this one. If anything, uh, I believe you have to roll. It's a 15. They have disadvantage because of the weapon you are wielding, I believe. Is that correct? 
Ooh. Uh. Come on, Falkrin. No, you. I believe. No, you are. You are 100% correct because Quietus. Uh, yeah, and the creature has disadvantage on saving throws against the effects that turn undead until the start of your next turn. And oh, that's only. Yeah. So. Now this is the. This is what you are attacking. This, yeah, you have to attack it, and once you hit it, then it has disadvantage. Right. So don't, you don't just. So all right. So what am I rolling? Well, so for turn undead, you need to roll. Uh, it is. Oh no 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 no. Uh, um, any creature save? within thirty feet of me must make a wisdom, wisdom saving save. throw. Uh, DC fifteen. Any creature. Any un sorry, each undead that I can see or hear within thirty. All right. Well, they have a negative two to wisdom, but I've rolled two twenties so far. Okay. All right. Describe this for me, please, Falcon. All right. Uh. Well. So as like. So she is just weeping because she sees all of these poor kids come tumbling out, and she realizes just the absolute horror and pain that each and every one of these poor souls has had to go through to get to this moment. And she just offers up the most sincere prayer to all Mater that these, these children don't feel any more pain than what they have already suffered in their life. Falkrin closes her eyes and concentrates and then a blast of radiant energy just <laughs> begins to emanate from her. And as the light passes over the undead children, they just drop one after another, just do, 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 do. And when it is finished, there are only four standing. That description deserves inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> just my thoughts. I've already got it, but... <laughs> oh. I thought you were talking to me. Yeah, oh, I thought you were trying to give inspiration to the DM, too. Uh -huh. You don't want to give need any DM. more rolls. Yeah. Do, I rolled two 20s on that. For He's, fine. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> yes, there are four remaining, and that will bring us back to the top with Silas. That's the fastest going I've to ever attack seen the... zombies be killed. I'm going to attack the closest one that I can, which is Clerics, baby. orange. Mm-hmm. And going to take a swipe with my glaive, uh, hitting 16. That's a hit. Doing 11 points of magic damage. Right. Sean, you said four of them made their saves? Yes. So why? Uh, four of them are still alive. Oh, we're um, undead. Five. And they have to, they, of course, they have to flee, don't they? Yes, yep. of course. At their so, turn. No, right away. Oh, right away on his turn? What was it? Her turn? It's, it's right away, their right? Their turn? No, it no. They, it happens on their turn. It's not like the spell. It's not a reaction. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not uh, like it's, the spell. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Yes, because we've been through this before. Right. Remember, we yeah. had a whole room full of zombies that were running away from us, and we attacked them all in the back so that they would stop running away from us. Yeah. All right. The Mr. Orange makes his um, uh, Constitution save. So you bring your glaive down upon it, and you right through the clavicle deep into the rib cage, <laughs> And it begins to crawl towards you, pushing the glaive through its body as it's trying to claw up your arm. Anything else, Silas? No, uh, that's it for me. <laughs> Persephone? That's, that's enough. Uh, my turn, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm going to attack the one right in front of me. With my non-magical rapier. Uh, before you do that, I forgot to roll for that one. Just a second. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I was saying. It's like uh, yep, four yep, left. Sorry, forgot to roll for that one. Ignore that. Um, oh. Yeah, it rolled a two on its wisdom save, so it is destroyed. So you bring your rapier up, turn your face away because this little tiny child is looking up at you reaching out a hand and in a different light it would look like it was asking for a cookie but it's actually trying to rip your throat out and Monster. just as it's about to touch you the light from Falkrin's turn and then hits it and it crumples and begins to sort of dissipate into dust oh, okay um, so I will go to here and my, I'll use that first attack, the 10. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 is a hit. For four piercing. Okay. 
may I use this second, which is a crit for my second attack? Of oh, course. Roll. Awesome. Uh, so a, a crit for <laughs> seven damage? That's that is enough. And since it was a crit, it does not get a constitution save. Oh, nice. So uh, how would you like oh. to end this child? This one looks like to be about 13-year-old boy. Uh, his hair is cut like a soldier's. Mm. Uh, she's just gonna right through, right through the eye with the with the rapier as fast as she can. And it hangs on your blade for a second as you pull it out, and then it crumples dead. Oof. Um, and I still got my bonus action, so I'm you gonna do. go here and use my dagger on that guy. This is the one that's been trying to crawl up. All right, so that is a hit. 22. It needs to make Seven a constitution damage. save. Twice. It so succeeds. I, uh, 18 with four damage, sorry. Oh, the, both of those hit, um, but the uh, you drive your dagger into the back of this child zombie, and it doesn't even register that you did that. It continues to pull itself towards Silas. I'm done. Next up, we have Jax. Um, he will jump up on top of the fountain, shoot over Persephone and stuff to the one that Rim's fighting. Okay. Uh, he will have sneak attack damage on that. I'm not sneaking, so. Uh, uh, well, because he's engaged with your um, your ally. You yeah. would have sneak attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'll advantage. Advantage 12 to hit. It's a hit. And 15 damage. 15 damage. Once again, the arrow strikes true. And let's see. It's still up. The arrow would have killed any living creature five times over sticking right in the Adam's apple of this small boy but it continues to attack Rim just blindly looking at him just <laughs> that will bring us to Raya unless you have something else Jax nope All right. Nope. Raya steps next to you Persephone just die and brings her sword down upon this one Okay, doing a lot of damage, but this one just needs to make its con save. And is still up. She hacks off one of its she arms, died. is reaching towards Silas, and she cuts it off right at the elbow. Um, and then it continues to reach, and she cuts it off again right at the shoulder, but it's still trying to grab him. Rhea is finished. Tython. All right. Let's see if I can do it with a shocking grasp. <laughs> Three ten for a hit. ten. All right. Ten is a hit. How's uh, ten damage? It's plenty. <laughs> it zzzz, sit there for a second, but it is still going for Silas. Anything oh else, Typhon? <laughs> I just sigh and, and stay there, I guess. Yeah. All right. This is why, this is why Falcon drinks. That's like this. <laughs> Legit, dude. Whew. All right. That will bring us to Yislin. Yislin jumps up next to um, next to Jax. I'm going to say that everyone is too involved in the battle, but as she jumps next to you, uh, Jax, you see all of a sudden this blonde woman, you see the hair hanging out of her um, her uh, hood, and it changes from yellow to white just instantly as she is coming forward, and then she steps past you and comes over to the zombie here, and stabs it with a dagger. She hits. Uh, 
with a four. The zombie is destroyed. Oh, thank God. So, there are only two left. They both attack Rim. No, they don't. No? No, they... they Oh, you're right. Well remembered. Both of them try to flee to the north. Um, You may make attack of opportunity if you wish. I do. Which Uh, one? I'll do the the one that's further north. Um, And we'll quarter staff. Uh... That's, hit, that's a hit. It is magic damage now. Hooray. Uh, two-handed, so 20. Why? Ten. Ten, ten, ten. That's not how that works. Oh, no. oh is that not how that works? <laughs> oh! Yeah. That's a lot of damage for a quarter staff. Ten. Uh, ten. ten. Darn, okay. I got so excited. Okay, no, ten. <laughs> I like ten it. Cool stuff. You bring down the staff on the head of this child that is running, but it is still up. It... I'm going to I'm going to put it right there, but it runs further than that. Although not by much. This one is right next to it. They're a little further than what we have on the map here, but still well within range of anyone who wants to run up and attack or shoot them. Okay. Does the one unturn when it gets hit? When it gets bonked? Yes, it does. Well remembered. Thanks for keeping me honest, guys. That's so what, what? you hit it as it begins to run past you, Rim, and it stops and turns back to attack. This is not going to go well for it. Come on, natural 20. Hey. I rolled a nine. That <laughs> does not hit. All right. Um, Lulu flies over. Oh, my turn. Oh. That was a, uh, that was an yeah, attack of sorry. opportunity. You, 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 nope, you, all good, all good. Um, I am going to... Uh, the one I hit is the one that's still in front of me, so I'm going to attack that one again. Right. Tears are just streaming down his face at this point. Um, mm. 23. That's a hit. For another 13. And it rolled a 7, which means you crush it. And it does not move anymore. And then uh, I will move up to the one that is running away and do my second attack, quarter staff. 26. That's a hit. 10. And it make its constitution save. You hit it as hard as you hit the other one, but somehow, although you feel the little bones breaking underneath the staff, it is still standing and now it turns around to look at him and now it's it's not running anymore it turns around to look at you part of its face is misshapen as the skull has been crushed and you see bits of brain along with maggots and other pieces of it oozing out of its face we are firmly in highlight real space right now I'm telling you (laughs) Oh. Lulu comes flying over and buzzes around you, Falkrin, so many times. She's like, oh, Falkrin, it was so amazing. Good for you. And that is the end of her turn. Falkrin. All right, so I'm going to move. God, I, can only, I can only get up to there, I believe, with my movement. Um, uh, this poor child. Don't waste another spell between all yeah, these. Yeah, no, I just. Uh... Oh! <laughs> I'm going to toll the dead. What kind of damage does that do? Uh, that is. It's necrotic, isn't it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe it's necrotic. Yes, yeah, it necrotic. Is. All right, so. I told. I'm going to just go ahead and roll this. Um... Wisdom save. Mm-hmm. It's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> so this Kong rings out, and the zombie stops in its tracks as it's going to slash at Rim. It fails its constitution save. All right, lovely. And collapses dead. Rim catches it and is holding it and just weeping into its body. 
And that is the end of combat, and that will be where we take our break. I mean, that's will be where we take, because we're broken. <laughs> <laughs> you look up at this building, and it seems clear that this was a school of some sort. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. So, here in the streets of El Torel, Conscript Group 14 has just dispatched a entire classroom full of zombified children. One of the many horrors here in El Torel and in Avernus. As the companion, the orb of glowing energy that for so long has acted as a second sun over El Torel, protecting it from all manner of evil things, including the undead, here in Avernus has been corrupted and now its energy streaks out across the city, creating undead. And the party stands amidst the broken limbs and crushed forms of many children. Some no older than five or six. (sighs) Rhea sort of slumps. This is... This is too much. Falkron walks over to Rim, who's still cradling the, the boy he just caught in his arms. Let him go. We're not enough. He's free now. Let him go. Rim is shaking as he lets the body of the child uh, gently on the ground. Persephone mm. peeks her head inside to see if there's any chance that there might be somebody in there that survived. Make a perception check. If anybody want to help me out yeah, with that. Yeah, I'll go with her. Then why don't you go ahead and do that? Your perception's so much better. Okay, you can give me advantage. Yep. 500. 22. <laughs> <laughs> so, Persephone, you put your head in to look and have to reel back because of the sight you see. However, you point and Jax is able to get in and get a really good look. These that you have slain are but a fraction of the dead children and adults that are in this school. Some of them appear to have been gnawed upon and eaten. Jax, with a perception of 22, you see over to the side a large barrel that looks like it might have something of value in it. Whereas the rest of the furniture and crates and various uh, pieces of school um, detritus have mostly been broken, crushed, or used as makeshift weapons. I will go check out the barrel and have a listen. Uh, make a perception check. Is there anyone in there? 27. There is no answer. And as you get close to it, with the 27, you can see um, the the type of cra- uh, barrel this is. It's been um, tarred. It look, m- looks like it might keep something liquid inside. And as you come and you look at it and you get closer, you realize this is a, a barrel of fresh water. It would be of great value to uh, someone who was perhaps uh, hiding out in one of these buildings, having run out of food or run out of water. Um, But for the zombies, it was worthless. I will. I'll take it. It's too big for me to drag. It is. Oh, uh, can you get rim? No, a friend should see this. I will um, kind of look over to where Falkrin and Rim are, and I will say, Their remains are meaningless, and you have not ended their suffering, I'm afraid. You know what happened to the souls of all of these people. So yes, you can change something. 
the state of their bodies is of no consequence. You have to fight harder to end the greater curse upon this place, yes? So stand up and let's go. Lulu comes and lands and she puts her trunk around your neck in a holophant hug. Oh, it'll, it'll be all right. Uh, just leans his head into her very gently, wipes his snout, and uh, stands up. And I think you're needed over here, Dragonborn. I, as he, uh, as he okay. approaches, I kind of... Uh, it's, it's bad in there. Steal yourself. He takes a deep breath, and uh, he... What am I getting? Jax, what is it? What do you need? Half ounce of water. It's fresh. And disgusting. It's got no worms in it. Sort of... Well, we hardly need water. Oh, I'm thinking more for the people back there. Oh, no, they've got a fountain. Yeah. What if we just brought it outside, so if somebody happened to come by it, no one's going to be coming anywhere near this mess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Press on. Makes sense. The, the best we thing we could have done, we've already done. We've slain all these poor creatures. Uh, Eastland, you said that there was a, 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 a cachet nearby? or, or... Oh, I, I have no idea. Just if I were looking for something like that, I would choose that house kind of takes the fun out of it when you can just walk in the front door. Does she seem sincere about that house? Make an insight check. That house. Oh, okay, I'm not too bad at insight. Oh. I'm going to assist you in that then. Yeah. Mm. She seems to be forthright about having chosen the house that looks like it, it might have the most wealth. She obviously, she does not seem to be lying about not knowing whether or not there's anything in there for sure. But she says, I mean, we should get going, right? Oh, yeah, it is a big house. It'll take a while to search. It would. Mm. How far are we from the uh, the shop? A few more blocks. All right. I think we need to continue on. Yeah, and so we can try to find it easier. We've made a lot of way. noise here as well. Indeed. Just remember that the money is... It, is about saving the lives, and we have only four days to do it. And we of can't course, Persephone, there are plenty of shops along the way. It would be a lot easier than trying to pick through some of these houses. You continue. She continues to lead, scouting ahead. She is able surprisingly well to evade those of you who choose to look closely for her. Um, but once or twice, Jax, uh, you manage to see where you should oh, Jax go. Hates her. No, she's doing more, his job. more. <laughs> she's doing more to the job. point. More to the point that, like, you're looking and you'd say, like, "Oh, I would definitely hide there on this next thing," and that's exactly where she goes to hide. So you know that she's there, but sometimes you don't see her. And eventually, you come to a street that is much like all the others that you've been here. Uh, down here in El Torel. It's clearly at some point was a very well manicured and maintained area for very upscale shops. Many of the same buildings that you have seen, you see fewer weapons and armor shops uh, as you get closer to this area. And on this street itself, nothing of the kind. These are all fine foods, spices, tea shop, um, dresses, uh, tailors, cobblers, but of the most prestigious names, some of the names you have heard even in Baldur's Gate because they have franchised out a bit. And on the street, with a beautiful green facade, is a shop that says Lelizier's Elixirs on a sign hanging out the front. And there is a small red potion underneath the lettering. J 
just looking at this facade, you say, oh, this looks like a very upscale building, but you can see, much like the buildings around it, just beyond the facade, there's great damage as the various quakes that have happened in Elturel over the past 10 day have taken their toll. Mm -hmm. Jax, check the door. Oh, it'll be a pleasure. I'll look to uh, what's her face and it will check the door. <laughs> <They're not. laughs> yeah. Islin sort of standing back says, right, well, this is the place. Please. This is a Show door. me your skills, goblin. <laughs> roll double one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the oh, dice tell a story, baby. What did you roll oh, there, Jax? Oh, I what rolled. What did you roll? A double oh, one. No. Double natural. Double ones. Oh, double performance fumbles. anxiety. Unreal. This is a door. I don't know. I'll go to open it. It's a wall. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is her door. <laughs> it's all right. These above-the-ground buildings can be tricky. Is that what I look like? And she comes over to it. She goes to it. She looks at it. And she says, "Oh," and she pushes the door, and it opens. It's not locked. <laughs> and shit. <laughs> you see this. As you step in, there is a and some soft music begins to play. Oh. Tran, 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 tran. I'm thinking of the girl from Ipanema, but yeah. Uh, this is, this is perfect. This is, oh, too big. Are I'm you not, not there? there? Did I'm I forget you? I will find you. Come closer. Too close. <laughs> There we are. Thank you, Who goes in first? Uh, I'll step in. Rim? Yes. No, Silas. Silas gets in there first. Oh, okay. You step in first, and as you step in, Silas, there is a, a small gust of wind that has a little bit of a bluish tint that does a miniature dust devil-like appearance right in the middle of this uh, rug, and you see a ghostly looking apparition of a tiefling. Very handsome, very sharp cheekbones, male with a long goatee that is braided down to a little bell at the bottom. He's wearing long robes, uh, but difficult to tell what kind of color they are since this is all sort of a um, ghostly bluish apparition. Welcome to Lelizier's Elixirs. I'm afraid that business hours are closed for the day. The master is only accepting appointments. Do you have an appointment? I look back, I look back. I'm sure we have the only appointment that matters. Your name, please. What was the family name, Persephone? Uh, uh, Ravenguard. Ravenguard. I'm afraid there is no Ravenguard on our list of appointments for today. I must ask you to leave. Thank you for stopping by at Lelizier's Elixirs. How, how are you open? Are you going in? Um, so far, all I'm seeing is everybody on the outside. Yeah, He's... I'm stepping in. I'm, oh, yeah. Right. Can I, yeah, Rim, can Rim I... was coming, so I'm sure Rim is up there. Even though it's a bit obvious, can I try and discern whether this is like an illusion or a programmed illusion or something like that? Uh, make an Arcana check. Nineteen. Uh, it's probably a programmed illusion. Um, it could potentially be some form of unseen servant. Um, depends. Uh, there are several different ways you could achieve this sort of effect. Mm. As do I get the sense in, that it could do actually do something? If we it depends. Yeah. <laughs> As you all come in, 
it hello welcome to lelizier's elixirs i'm afraid that normal business hours are closed the master is only accepting appointments do you have an appointment this is an emergency appointment oh what is your name My name is <laughs> My name is Typhon Ophiacus. Our business concerns the safety of the entire city and perhaps the soul of your master. I'm afraid there is no Typhon Ophiacus on our schedule for appointments today. I must ask you to leave. How if you do you not, open? I will be forced to summon the watch. The watch? I I take a few more steps in. Do do do. Step. Should I step? Welcome to ladies ears. And then um, Yislin comes in. She says, the appointment is under Dr. Dual Camera. I was going to say that as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> With Lely, I didn't, I didn't want to push it, but yes. <laughs> ah, yes. Doctor, please have a seat. The master will be with you shortly. May I provide you with some refreshment? Oh, I'd love some food, some ham, bacon. Of course. And and after a moment, repeats. I'm afraid we are out of ham and bacon. Is there something else I can provide you with? Mutton. Uh. Uh. I'm afraid we're out of mutton. Is there something else I can provide? Oh, what about some rats? Oh no. <laughs> I'm afraid there is no food to be found. Most distressing. I will take this up with the master immediately. Is there anything I can get you to drink? Too scared anything. to ask. Goblin brew. I'm not familiar with goblin brew. I'll just. So. Anyhow. So, uh, Sean, it. Jax keeps sending this thing away yeah. to get things. So it's coming back and saying <laughs> that it's out of whatever. So I'm I'm looking around the room to see if there's like like. Is, so, are there other doorways? Are there, you move into like, this room, and it's a very well-appointed sitting room. The uh, floor is made of very fine, dark marble. The furniture is beautiful leather, polished. You see plants over there by where Rim is, small statue of a um, some sort of fey creature playing pipes. Um, and as you come closer, it seems to be that this is where the music is coming from. Um, there is a table desk of some sort to uh, the west. Um, behind it is a large mirror, although it is broken. And you can see that beyond it, it actually appears to be some sort of hidden room that has now been revealed because of the destruction of the rest of this area. And directly to the north of Silas is a large green curtain. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look through the broken mirror, Sean, into the uh, the room behind it. Is there mm -hmm. anything? You see a door. Moving to the okay, north. but like nothing else inside the room? Nothing else inside the room, correct. How, how hard would it be for me to get into that room? Um, with a little bit of breaking away of some of the sharper areas of the glass, it would not be difficult at all. All right. It would be a really cool thing to run through, though. <laughs> uh, Falkron would fail. Our little legs would get stuck. Yeah, yeah. Dangling. Uh, I'm yeah. going to that's, slowly. That's how try I to died peek the third the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peek behind the curtain. Slowly try. Uh, the curtain moves, and you see a great Rolling deal initiative. of rubble and debris. And for some inexplicable reason, a cow that looks up at you and says, Oh, oh hello, I'll have some I'm beef. Beef. I'm going to quickly look. I grab at, Jax by the oh, scruff. And many dead imps <laughs> surrounding us. Silas, what is happening? Did you just moo? <laughs> there appears to be a cow. I'm going to look as closely as I can at the cow from the curtain to determine if 
there are any bones protruding from the cow, which are its own. Make a perception check. Ooh, zombie cow. I'll help you. I'll take a look as well. <laughs> I love how quickly you were on that. <laughs> like, oh, zombie cow. I, yeah, I rolled yeah we got to take care of that. He got a 14. I got a 14. Looking at it, it <clears throat> shakes its head, has large, soulful cow eyes looking at you sadly. I'm gonna. No. After what happened a few minutes ago, I'm worried about where this is going for the cow. I mean, same, but it's a hungry cow. I'm gonna yeah. take some of the plant um, from behind me, um, and I'm going to uh, gingerly offer it to the cow. Long tongue comes out and sort of snakes around the uh, the plant. <laughs> Like eating tomatoes. Um, the, the commitment to the cow eating face was just like. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast uh, Wait, speak with. No, I'm not. I have no. You spell use all your slots. spells. Son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah. Well, I hope they enjoy the berries. In the oh, for the berries. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I, so, so this is now like the fourth moo you have all heard coming from behind yeah. this curtain. What does the servant say? I'm asking for beef. I'm afraid we don't have any beef. Is there something else I could help you with? I can hear it in the back. You appear to have exhausted no the idea. limit of this thing's vocabulary. He's got no idea. You can keep speaking is. to it. Yeah, that's what he's <laughs> you doing. Keep it. speaking. He's getting upset with it. Uh, <laughs> I, Persephone, you step behind the curtain and you see a cow just looking all, looking at you all so fully. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna use my, uh, animal handling skill to move it into the sitting room and, uh, and try to coax it towards the plant so it's out of this rubble area. See? See? Look, there's a cow! Alright, you, uh, make an animal handling check there, please. So rarely get to use this skill. I can assist with that. 22. Uh, don't need to, though. I'm proficient right. in animal handling. Uh, you are going to be able to move this cow wherever you wish it to go. All right. Um, you're proficient in animal handling. Oh, we're gonna have to talk about that. It hasn't come point. up much. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it uh, uh, over here just to put it near the plant, and uh, and then I'm gonna start looking through the room. It's on the couch. Yes, it comes <laughs> over. It just sort of <laughs> knocks over the couch. No. Just <laughs> a cow it's on, in a potion shop. It's on the. Couch. <laughs> Aha. I pull out my knife I, and I'll. Shall I start carving some? Uh, no, no, hang on, Jax. Last time you tried to eat an animal in the house, it turned out to be Lady Raven's guard. So just pump the brakes. Don't oh. you dare eat that. Lulu, make sure Jax does not eat that cow. All right. Lulu comes flying over. Uh, and as she does, she comes next to Typhon. And all of a sudden, the cow's form shimmers and disappears. And in its place is something that you've never seen before. Tiny creature that all of a sudden pops into existence where the cow was. I thought you were going to say like a load of hamburgers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and goes... <laughs> and uh, Lulu says, Demon! And goes for an attack. We will roll initiative. I fed it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will teach you. That's right. What happened? All right. Is it small? It oh, is. come on. It Velcro. looks like uh, about the size of an Ugh. imp. And as soon as I get my ducks in a row here, I will show you it. So I've gone from am I being... am I misremembering one that we saw before? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the first one you've seen, but I could be wrong. In terms of an imp, or that's not an imp. A demon. Long horns. Um, uh. It's not nearly as humanoid as an imp, and it just sort of. <laughs> It begins to like rip at the couch in its frenzy. It's a gremlin. I just fed it after midnight. We're toast. <laughs> Were you able to see it? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. 
All right. At the top of the order, we have Rin. Oh, all right. Well, uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do three shots. Um, shot, shot, everybody. Nice. Uh, Twenty. That's a hit. Uh, eight. Uh, that is not a hit. No, eight is the damage for oh, the first attack. Very good. Uh, this is non-magical damage, right? Uh, that is correct. Attack number two. Another 20. That is a hit. Yeah. Another eight. <laughs> it falls to the couch, pierced by these two arrows of rim, and then it begins to melt into this dark green ichor, almost black, and it sort of pours all over the couch and creates a steaming effect as it just melts away. Oh, that was fast. Is it it dead? Was it saying anything when it was babbling, or just making Um, Make, uh, are you proficient in abyssal? Yes. Yes, it was. Oh, so am I. It was the wrong one! It was the wrong one! That's what it was saying. Yes, indeed. Wait a second, let me take care of all my music here. Back to the nice, pleasing music there. Um, Lulu goes over it and begins to fly around the, uh, the puddle of goo and lands on the couch. Good. Demons. Terrible. Nice catch, Lulu. Oh, yeah. hmm? Before we continue, I'd like to cast something to try and search this place more thoroughly. If you all wouldn't mind. Of, yeah, of course. And I will turn to... Um, I was going to do this a bit earlier, but turn to Eastland and say... You were just going to walk us all, walk in and trying to make a stupid appointment on our own, one by one, weren't you? I wanted to see what you would do. But, you know, can't begrudge a girl a little fun. It's been <laughs> a rough week. <clears throat> You'll crack a, the corner, the slightest bit of a smile and sit down and kick start casting detective. As you turn to ask that of her, everybody else is kind of distracted by what just happened. You are seeing her revert back into the blonde-headed form that she's been using, but just at the edge of your sight, as you looked, you could see she was in her true form before showing now the face that everyone can see. The spider's peeking out. That shouldn't be. Hmm. I've seen it, and I'm certain that some of the others have as well. Oh. Let's be aware. How do you think they'll take it? There's a goblin here, after all. That was my thinking. <laughs> I doubt they'll attack Do they know inside. your secret? I would say they suspect, but the true nature of it, I don't think so. The fact that it's slipping is distressing, but I don't want anybody not trusting me. Let me know if it happens again. I'll go back to casting. <laughs> All right, what are you casting? Oh, that's a good point. Um, that um, uh, Silas brought up sort of on the side here. Would I know I'm proficient in religion? Mm -hmm. Would I know about the faith of Vandria and such? Or it's a bit obscure. I mean, with a high enough roll, sure. Well, more from just conversations. Cons just I mean, considering he was, he was a I've, paladin running around yeah. yakking about Yeah, it. and yeah, I've yeah, talked basically. about I've talked to, or not recently, but I did, there was a point when Typhon and um, Silas talked a bit more at length about right. faith versus non-faith and such, so. Um, 18? Yeah, so. uh, definitely part of the Sildarine. You're not 100% sure of the, the actual 
tenets and the actual uh, spheres of influence that she has, but uh, she's definitely not one of the top elven um, uh, deities in Arvalor. Uh, but uh, she is uh, definitely an elven deity, definitely one of the martial ones. Um, you recall that uh, her symbol is a red shield with a eye and a tear got it is any <laughs> the relationship of their followers to drow same as any elves or uh, yes it's the um there is a, quite a bit of mythos and history to go into there but yes there is a uh a connection between vandria and the drow she you believe she might be directly related to Loloth in some in some uh, respect based on what you mm. heard okay i will communicate that in some words as well specifically to be careful around him because well that could be complicated well don't worry too much she's apparently a fickle being has abandoned him and left him stripped of all his powers. So she's an elf, is what you're saying? Apparently, yes. Mm. Oh. Anyway, I that's that. I'm going to keep doing this. He's waving his hands, chanting, um, and with his spell book open in the corner here. All right, so Falcon has come around the corner, and she's going to open the door to the mirror room. Okay. Um, if it's possible. Yeah. Moving some of the debris about, and all, it is possible. It looks like this was a way for somebody to be in a room observing the lobby of this area without mm -hmm. being seen. Um, Typhon, cop, as you try to walk over there, you are impeded by the rubble. However, you do see that there is a door. Um, and you think that with enough scrambling, you could probably get to it. I see you mean Sil Silas. Silas, Silas. Silas yeah. yes, I meant Silas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will uh, assist him. In wave everybody over. Rim and Rim and Persephone are close by. I'll kind of wave them over. Kind of look, look you know, point. It looks like a door. It's not having good experiences with doors at the moment. Check it out. So, uh, what are we it looking at? Does require effort. I will um, say either of you can make a athletics check, or one of you can make it with advantage. Uh, my athletics is plus eight. Silas, where are you? Uh, plus six, but I'm proficient, so I'll give you advantage. Okay. Ooh, let's see if I do this correctly with the double clicking. I did it. Uh, Twenty-two. Yes, with the 22, you're able to get down and you, with a mighty grunt as the silver dragonborn's muscles bulge under his metallic scales, he picks up a large piece of the fallen uh, stonework and completely clears away the door in a fraction of the time that you would have expected it to happen and reveals more debris and a... Spiral staircase that goes down. And is that a dead body? It is. It is a dead imp, along with the other dead imps that you have seen. Mm, someone's already done Jackson's work. I pop my head back in here and say, we found downstairs. While I'm going to listen that. at the stairwell while other people are collecting. While I would have been doing that, Jax would have been searching the room for loot. All right, make an investigation check. Mm. 23 as you go to put on your glasses you reach to your neck and realize that they're not there Jax <laughs> they were on my head you should put your glasses on to see if you can find your glasses they're not on your head these are fun Oh, I will gut you. <laughs> and she's like doing the... Sorry, I rolled a 20 <laughs> on her sleight of hand check. Um, she is uh, doing um, 
like the the coin fountain, except she's using her glasses going back and forth. Never seen a goblin with glasses before. Do you really need these? Yes, I'm an intelligent goblin. Now give me them back. I see. Um, you silver-haired um, thief. And I will look up and say, just stop the chanting for a moment and say, not intelligent enough to stab you in the stomach on a whim, though, and go back down and, um, or not to, however that makes sense. <laughs> not intelligent enough <laughs> to, to not stab to, you. Uh, does does not stab intelligent you. enough not so to intelligent. avoid stabbing you yeah. in there the you stomach on a whim. Doesn't make any Honestly, sense. Watch out. Pretend <laughs> I said <laughs> this in a way that makes sense. Difficult. Go back <laughs> to your family. <laughs> Concentration. She hands it's them, it's, she hands it's role playing back. game. You can say I'm sarcastic just by saying I'm sarcastic. <laughs> she hands you back the the uh, the glasses and just I was just. Did she hear what fun. I said though? Yes, yeah, she did. Silver head thief. Yeah. I, I then go back to searching, and I got a twenty three. Um. All right. You find a hidden cache of coins. Is it three thousand? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's one giant coin worth three thousand. Yes. Oh, fantastic! Can I carry That's it? Exactly it's a bitcoin. <laughs> it's a bitcoin. Yeah. I can't tell if Sean's being sarcastic. It's not going to be worth anything in four you days. Find, you find fifty-four <laughs> pieces of gold. Fifth. What? Sorry, five. Fifty-four pieces of gold. Fifty-four pieces of gold okay. in a sack in a hidden compartment uh, behind the desk. I will add it into my in bag. Sack, in the compartment in the desk. You know. 54 gold. All right. By this time, Typhon, I'm sure whatever spell you were casting has gone off. Fireball. Just kidding. No. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> oh, God. I just All of your problems go. have been solved. How yeah. much is, uh, how much is two th 200 platinum worth? 2,000 gold? Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Getting close. I've, I've, got two, I've, got, I've got the money already. So wow. I thought um, I I use detect magic. Mm. So. All right, um, so you are detecting illusion um, and conjuration magic from the uh, unseen servant that keeps popping up. It is definitely a combination of programmed illusion and unseen servant. Okay. Um, you detect. Um, I guess it would be enchantment. So yes, another um, enchantment magic uh, coming from the um, uh, coming from the statue. Uh, you detect um, enchantment magic mm. coming from Islin. Um, can I look at the statue more closely then to try and do we know we we haven't really gotten anything from that yet? Correct. Uh, correct. Nobody has investigated it. Okay. Um, I'll I try to. discern where this enchantment is coming from um it's as you Just approach it it, it, thing. it is somebody has used this object on upon which to place their uh illusory music um ah. enchantment. it seems that it is just creating music in the room interesting okay i will just kind of go do you know um jack's did a pretty thorough sh uh, oh yeah, you know, I, detect magic yeah, um, just to get like all of this, just to see if anything pings out. A little metal just, detector. Uh, uh, the only things that glow and are the things I've mentioned and the things that you would expect to see. Okay. Um, well, I have this up. Shall we go downstairs? See what we can find. Absolutely. Let's, yeah. Can we all get through the door now that it's? Thanks. Yes, now that it's been cleared by Rim, you can all definitely get through it. So you all go downstairs? Let's go mm -hmm. over here. Indeed. Uh, I was going to try to listen at the stairwell while oh. everybody was doing various different things, just to see if I could hear, you know, masses of dead creatures or demons. Oh, Since there's a dead imp on the way on this side of the door. Please make a perception check, Silas. I'm certain I can fail that just as well as I can fail anything, having rolled a oh. six. You do not hear anything that is particularly untoward. Let's go to hell. Already there. All right. We're going down, down, down. As On the way down the stairs. Oh, go ahead, Sean. As you go down the stairs, Typhon, inexplicably, your um, detect magic spell ends. 
Um, Falcon, cast light. Hammer goes it does off. Does not illumine. Uh, I can't. Magic is dampened here. What would do that? I believe it's called a. Do would I know this? Would it require make a it out kind of check? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's called a. Um... Ah, twenty-five Ooh. anti-magic oh. field. Anti-magic field. Is there a way we can turn it off? With magic. Not uh, not from the outside. Perhaps if we find the source or a trigger word or... Maybe. As you begin to continue down the steps, Rhea is bringing up the rear and Lulu is sort of flying above you all as you all come down. She goes to the front, goes to the back, goes to the front, just sort of maintaining a patrol. Um... It now becomes quite obvious that Islin is not a blonde-haired, um, pale-skinned no. human. She is, in fact, a drow. As Could you explain the, how this is revealed? Yes, I will. Just a second. As I find her new um, token. New token. It's around here somewhere. That is... And they really see that Jax is actually a minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, the the goblin best one. ever. Oh. What a twist. Okay. Now that that is taken care of, let's see. I'm going to take care of that. And, and, and she's enormous. <gasps> She's a Goliath drow. So, you're just walking down. Um, so, I suppose what it really comes down to is only those of you who are uh, who behind are her. able to see, behind her or able to see in the dark, because there is no light source. I'm um, assuming that I would be up front and. I don't know, Rhea or... So you, were, you, you, or... you did step forward, so we will say you were up front. Typhon, you're probably in the back. Rhea would be um, right behind Silas, and Falkron, where would you like to be? Uh, I would be close to Typhon. Okay, um, and then Persephone? I would say you're probably going to be the one who notices this, because it makes sense. You see... Um, well, you wouldn't see. see. You don't have yeah. dark vision. Yeah. I'm, I'm so who is behind here? So Typhon and Falkron. So Falkron, and you have Jax already did oh, yeah. something fishy about her. Yeah, Jack, Jax, are you in the back or are you in the front? Um, he would have been with T Typhon, so he would have been coming in from the back. Yeah. All right. So you see that the hood that she's been wearing disappears, and a long shock of white hair is revealed. Um, it's difficult to see the color of her skin in the um, in the dark because of the dark vision does not get, allow you to see color. However, the the fact that the the hood disappears and the hairstyle is completely different and definitely a, a much lighter shade than just blonde. Um, she has been under some sort of illusionary effect. And the fact that she's an elf, so not a human. Right, yes, you, of course, two, see two long-pointed ears. Two little, one housekeeping thing, one question. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on a new map. Hopefully everybody has found that map and can see where we are mm -hmm. at. And the next thing is, uh, DM, could you give some background on what it would mean if this person is revealed as a Dark Elf? The well, context is, within this game. That is going to be uh, on an individual basis. In Baldur's Gate, it is not that uncommon to see drow. They usually, of course, keep to the shadows. But in some of the more disreputable yeah, we saw bars and tavern, taverns in Baldur's Gate, it's not that uncommon to see them. They're not illegal or hunted, but they are dangerous. Most people have a considerable prejudice against them. 
if they were to be walking in the street, it would be wise if they were under similar situation to what Jax was. Tolerated. Did you see two of them at the Low Lantern? Yes, you did. Yeah, two of them at the Low Lantern. Yeah, and I saw two of them. But definitely a boogeyman race. Stereotypically evil. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Stereotypically evil. um, Fanatics. Um, Almost like a a religious cult level of devotion to the goddess Lolth. And. Actually, not almost anything about it. Definitely a fanatic. Um, They are relentless, pitiless, merciless. They consider it the greatest possible joy of their life to murder anything who isn't them. Their word for anything that is not a drow is uh, the same word they use for excrement. (laughs) But then this is Forgotten Realms, and then there is... Who's a... uh... The famous one. There is there, there are Frist. Frist. there is a famous drow that mm-hmm. everybody knows who is not like the others. Yeah. And everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who has met Drist or has met somebody <laughs> like Drist or yeah. was helped by a mysterious person and as they were leaving you got a glimpse of purple eyes and dark skin. He's more than a drow. So that is what you see as you come down. But as you reach the bottom, it is very dark. Mm. And all of a sudden, okay? the effect ends and light begins to emanate from Falkron's hammer and Yislin reverts back to her other form. I'm going to leave her a drow for now, just as a reminder. If I'm still having detect magic, does it... It's not dispelled, is it? It pops back up. Oh, cool. Well, Well, that was... I guess the magic's back on? As (laughs) you come down the steps, (laughs) you can see two hallways. One extends to the south. The other extends to the west. And there are sconces with torches in them, emanating light, but no heat. You see a large tapestry on the wall to your west. And at the place where you see the purple circle here, you cannot see beyond it. The light from the two sconces that are right there hits that area and is completely absorbed. Um, can I ask? I'll say to my um, I will. Well, I will actually just say, steady me for a moment, and I'll push against the wall and try and see through my imp's eyes to see what's beyond the darkness. Hmm. Let's see here. You just summon. So it was the is the, the imp has yet to have been unsummoned, correct? You have um, not un, you have not unsummoned him since the last time you summoned him, right? Correct. Okay. Prize Jax hasn't just taken a swing. He's at invisible. Him. Oh, okay. uh, Jax has seen it, and Typhon did tell Jax. So you get an inquiry into your mind. Typhon, what is it you want? So I want to see through its using my ability to see okay. through its eyes. It looks past the darkness and sees that the hallway continues at the end. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. Reveal your secrets. <sighs> at the end of it mm-hmm. is a doorway that's opened and a room filled with treasure. Are we meant to see that spell effect on the floor? Mm, this one here? Yeah, the purple one, yeah. Yeah, that is a the darkness that I described. Oh, I, I cast magic missile at um <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. The seams 
too easy. Uh, what do I you mean, see, Typhon. An enormous hoard of treasure beyond that globe of darkness. <laughs> well, that screams something. I don't think I have to tell you what. Mm. Cache. <laughs> sure. Do we do we tell him? Probably not. No. <laughs> Why are you all looking what? at me like that? No, I said. Uh, well, yeah. She uh, says to. And uh, I kind of look. Falcon, I guess. Why are you looking? Oh, like I get it. Yeah. Did you do something to your hair? <sighs> Did it happen again? The threads completely unraveled. I'm afraid the spider mm. has. Well. <sighs> Forgive the deception. I'm hoping that you'll be a bit more open than others, based on your traveling companion. We, I we thought bang. the illusion popped back up, or it did pop just... back up, but Falcon observed it. it. Okay. Um, while, while we make no judgments as to how you wish to appear, know that we judge people by their actions and not by their appearance. Yeah, so also, don't take my shit again. And also, we travel with jacks, so we gave it back. <laughs> she closes her eyes for a moment and the form of the human woman dissipates and now you all can see in the light she is a beautiful, dark-skinned, white-haired drow. I go, whoa. Nice to meet you. Is well, then, you already have. If that is your name. It is indeed. Yislin Mizanre. Oh. I take oh. a step back and pull out my glaive. It steps in between. Uh, uh, yeah, Falcon does as well. Oh dear. Silas. He doesn't agree with you took my stuff either. Haven't How you already figured out? Right? Sorry. How can I make it right, Goblin? 50 gold. Done. <laughs> There's is... a whole lot of it apparently right down there. You can have my share. Oh, oh you is told it? him. Oh, I'll better go wait. check. There's a no, mountain wait. of it uh, that I think it's a trap. <laughs> oh, you think? Hmm. Could Is this be? going to be a problem? She puts her arms out looking at you, oh. Silas. Si I'm not a threat. It's just who I am. Silas puts a hand on your shoulder, or uh, Rim puts a hand on your shoulder, Silas, and says, we are in a place where we need allies. She has not proven herself to be a foe. She doesn't have to prove it. It just is. Mm. Guilty based on how I look. It's a common. I'm sorry, but the part where you were deceiving us until now? Well, you can I mean, hardly blame me based on this reaction. What do you think the poor people back at the catacombs would have thought? Silas, we use the same we use the same logic when it comes to Jacks. That's why I carry him in my back. Oh, I just thought it's because you like me eating your food. Well, no, that's the unfortunate circumstance of you being in my bag. But well, there's none in there no more. If nope, it makes you feel more comfortable, I can always put the illusion back. Then you can pretend that I'm not a scary drow. Oh, you're not scary. Thank you. That won't be necessary. Silas isn't going to slaughter Typhon's friend in front of him. Well, that's good to know. Typhon, can Typhon, you Typhon, did you west? know this? For years and years and years before I ever met you. Yes. Well, I can see that you're the type of person that prefers their world to be black and white. I can tell why you're Typhon's friend. You have a mouth that just won't stop. <laughs> Apparently going on the Thank offensive you? when you failed to be defensive is now your tact. Apparently when your illusion drops, now you will be sarcastic until I die. I'm already in hell. This is confirmation. You're drowning in the grave, friend. I was just covered by dead babies, Typhon. 
Indeed. I can under I can forgive you for grasping for black and white, but you'll not find it here. Steal yourself. Think of the mission. This is a distraction. And there's lots of Of course gold. you're right. And of course I'm wrong. Well, as long as we can agree on that, everything should be fine. So, what? Her tongue is more forked than yours, Typhon. He I don't smiles. Think that's possible. A big smile. <laughs> that's a scary looking smile. It's a scary looking glaive. We're losing focus. Uh, Typhon, what is beyond the, the darkness? I saw a hoard of treasure. Now, that's all. I saw. But I'm sure that's not all that's there, if that's even there. Mm. I highly doubt it. Uh, now there is a globe of, a small globe of magical darkness here. I could try to dispel it. There might be another candle. Well, we should check the doors first and see just what the situation is. There might be a pit. Could there be could be a lot of things. If, if the anti-magic shield was any sort of indication, this is some powerful the what, what? forces. The, the anti-magic, the, the shield we went through, Jax, was, uh, that's why I'd, the light didn't work and... Oh, I didn't see any light anyway. Huh. Well, you know, don't worry about it. The doors is his. Mm. If we find nothing else, we can investigate the coins. Mm -hmm. Jax. Don't go near the treasure until we've cleared it. Until we've cleared it. Until we go through the other rooms, don't go in the treasure room. <sighs> Hang on a minute. All right. Hang on. So, what's the plan, folks? Uh, can okay. <laughs> Love it. Oh my heart. Well played. <laughs> For those of you who can't see the dice, Jax just eight. rolled a 18 on a wisdom save. <laughs> Wisest goblin of them all. Or in this case, oh, right. so that being said, I... Jax, there are doors. Hopefully, you've recovered from your performance earlier. Oh, I don't know what you're on about. I'll go and check the doors. Alright. Make an investigation check. 26. Yes. <laughs> He's back, everybody. Take that. You step beyond Silas, and before your foot touches the ground, you realize that the area in front of these doors doesn't seem right. Oh, there's a trap. You think, based on what you see and what you've seen in the past, if this is similar to other traps that you've seen, you could probably walk on it without any problem. However, somebody bigger than you could not. I uh, check all around and find the trigger point pressure plate. And then the I'll pressure be... plate is in front of it, the entire area that I, I not look, show, uh, did not show up. No, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. That <clears throat> entire area is a pressure plate. I try and check what the. Um, obviously, I'm assuming it would be on the same investigation. Um, check what it would trigger. Um, that is a mystery. Oh, okay. I will you try look to up them. to see if something would fall? No. The only thing that seems not normal is this tapestry. It is somewhat ugly. Is it not the sort of thing that you would expect to see. Typhon? Hmm? Is it showing up as magical for Typhon? Yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. It is showing up as as magical. Conjuration. Hmm. Ah. Not kind of, uh, evocation, excuse me. There's a trap here, and I think it could be that. I bet it's magical. It is not the tapestry itself. It is something behind it. Oh, yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> Jax, would you... No, perhaps not. Hmm. 
Well, I think there may be some sort of sigil or some magical ward behind it, but um, if you lift it, I may be able to dispel it, or... Well, I could try to disable it. How about that? Um, I can use Mage Hand to lift it. Perhaps I should just step cut back the from the pressure down. plate. Yeah, I don't want anyone in the on the pressure plate when it goes off, though. Jax, would you step back? Yeah, he steps back. Oh, I'll step back. Persephone, would you do the honors? You step forward to look. Uh, so I just use Mage Hand to lift up the, slowly lift the tapestry. You lift it up, and there is a large circle of runes on the uh, on the wall, um, written in draconic. I can read it. It says, "Wind, unending wind." Is it? Is that it, or is it actually a like a a ward, like a you know a glyph? This is. The, it is the, the uh, evocation magic is coming from this design. Hmm. I will. I will dispel it. Very good. Uh, it's if it's third level and lower, you don't have to roll, right? I think Correct. Still has to roll on a, that's counter spell, isn't it? It's they're the uh, same. They're the okay. same. Um, let me just double check something. Now that dispel magic's on the board, I'm gonna have to know all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while you're while level. you're looking it up, uh, Rim will come up to Silas and say, "Are you all right with this?" I don't believe I have much of a choice, do I, Rim? Rim Lynn is leaning against the wall, looking somewhat bored. Remember the souls we're here to protect. I haven't forgotten. I, Falcon, I could perhaps use a bit of suffering. To sharpen my mind through this. Um, you do not need to roll. It is a second oh, level spell. Never mind. You let loose the dispel and you watch as the <laughs> magic fades away from this glyph upon the wall. Hmm. Good, because Falcon was just reminding kind of about um, guidance. I was gonna right. Oh, lovely. Oh, okay. I good. was I was gonna beg for guidance. Just like stuff. You but, want me uh, to hit you? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Cause I'll do it. Um, okay. <laughs> chat suggested okay. you throw the goblin at the trap, and I mean I'm not happy with that. That's not. That's not on. Wait, what? Suggesting throw the goblin at the trap. Who said that? <laughs> chat. Okay. Chat saying throw chat the goblin. Did? At oh, the <laughs> chat did. Well, I mean, you can always get another goblin. We've I, we had a goblin in another game that I that I play, and like the amount of times they're just like, "Oh, throw the goblin in there," and it's just like sad. Ooh, <laughs> that's almost like thinking a warhammer doesn't have a personality. <laughs> if only it had a soul. Yeah. Um, that is effectively ended this trap, as far okay. as you can tell, Typhon. Okay. All right, Jax. It's safe. I oh, know it's safe for me. Hmm. I'll walk on it well, and start jumping up and down see if anything happens there's a click each time you jump on it there's a click like it's trying to start something but nothing is happening imagine like the whole group's like ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's fine click 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 <laughs> oh, yes! oh shit it reset <laughs> <laughs> refreshing my inbox yeah um, I will check the doors for traps alright uh, make an investigation check We'll use one for both of them. Unless it's like... 20. 20. All right. So as part of your investigation check, you definitely hear um, strange guttural sounds and the smashing of glass coming from the western uh, door. Uh, it does not appear to be trapped or locked. Um, from the north, you hear nothing. It is not trapped. And actually, as you put your hand on it to sort of check to see what it's about, it swings except instead of opening like this it opens like this the hinges oh. are on the top and they move with just the barest touch oh. 
That's weird. Giant weird. doggy Freaky. door. I could hear noise coming from down there. I'll point to the west. Would our scouts like to see what it is? I'll go through the doggy flap. All right. You... Not what I meant, but... Okay. <laughs> Open the doggy flap, <laughs> and it, it... And then closes behind you. You all lose sight of Jax as he moves into that room. You see a pit ahead of you. Uh, a mosh pit. Anything in it? Uh, make a perception check. Du -du -du. Immediately follow 22. up with Jax and kind of 22. push the so, door. Uh, that perception check. Oh, 22, yes. Uh, as you look down, at first you're like, oh, there's nothing there. And then you look and you're like, oh, well, there's some water there. But then you look again, and floating in the water, there appears to be bones, a shield, a blade. Does it appear to be a fine quality? <laughs> <laughs> you are looking down upon... Oh, some shit. sort of uh oh cube-like <clears throat> gelatinous mass. Ah! Yeah, I, uh, oh no! I take a but run it, and jump. It is in the pit, ten feet down. Oh come now, let's not make any hasty judgments just because of what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Islin rolls her eyes so hard to disappear behind <laughs> her head. I won't bite. Oh, that's a. Uh, do I know what it is? Um, probably. A goblin would probably have encountered. You probably at least know somebody who knows somebody who's eaten by a gelatinous cube. Oh, that's one of those big jelly cubes in there. <laughs> Which, you don't want to go in there. I lost a whole tribe once to them. Well, All right, come on, Jax. Back to the There's about way, four then. goblins. I'll walk back in, and I'll go uh, through here. All right, you open the door, and immediately you see two more of those creatures that you saw upstairs. They turn around and look at you and go, and disappear. And you hear more, and the smashing of glass from beyond the area. You can right. see them. And as soon as I, I hear the smashing glass, I uh, follow up. Can I translate? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Of course. Um, so, yeah. The one said, Someone's coming! Okay. And what, what, what was the other sound? Or just. It was another, Someone's coming. Okay. <laughs> just, they all just echo each other. They, they like to repeat coming, themselves. Coming, coming. Yeah. <laughs> I like bread. Um, they will. I will call out in um, uh, abyssal and say, um, um, "Reveal yourselves. Do not dare think to attack. You wouldn't believe how quickly we slayed your comrade upstairs. Though we have no desire to waste our resources on you." Mm -hmm. uh, make an intimidation check. Oh yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, so I'll, I'll back him up and also speak in abyssal as well. Oh, whoa! Oh. Never mind. Dirty twenty though. You abyssing it too, Falcon? I yeah. You, I didn't realize you. I, I can speak both abyssal and celestial. I got the highs and the lows. Oh yeah. Um, you hear? It's <laughs> pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, we have magic juice. We are stronger. Mm. You are right. We will destroy him. And all of a sudden, Falcon, you are attacked. <sighs> we magic will roll juice. initiative. Really? Right. Maybe we can just hit them with the flappy door. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick what them up. What a sentence. Hit them with the up flappy throw door. Throw them in with the cube. All right. That was a terrible roll. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Not a three or a one. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Rim. <laughs> Run and counter. Oh, no, that didn't work. I thought I had my thing selected, but it was a lie. 
This is a little complicated for me. Let me uh, give me a moment to get this set up. No worries. Thank you. Jax is about to add quasi crusher to his um oh, no, badges. It's just, it's just an imp. Yeah. It's an They're imp. just always imps. Yeah. Oh, imps. Yeah. 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 Imps and imps and imps. Unless someone like, told him it's not an imp. He's at the moment. No one said no. That's not an imp. Oh no. Okay. He's just. Well, he nobody. Nobody has. Yet, people have yet to correct him. I know what Jalat looks like. I was always yeah. waiting for. But, the greatest weapon in all Faerun yeah. is just pointing at something and saying, imp. That's an imp. That's an imp. <laughs> <laughs> the, funny, the weird thing is, is, his dagger is the size of like a, a letter opener. It's tiny. It's, it's, it's yeah. literally oh, yeah. tiny. <clears throat> it's all about where you stick it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it right. is. Yeah, but... <laughs> so I'm trying to use the d d Beyond oh, no. Encounter Builder. So... Oh. Uh. Oh, that's new, isn't it? Is it new? Oh, okay, so it's here. Dude, 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 dude. All right. Um, now you can roll initiative. Oh, what? What? Oh. Are we doing it all again? It didn't show up for some reason. Okay. Oh. Oh well. Okay. So just I'll I can add them in. Um, if you wanna. Mine was um, pretty terrible. I should keep it. Rim, what did you roll? Uh, eight. Oh, okay. So I got rolled a little bit better. Actually, I'll, I'll just put everybody's in. Um, Jax. I'm, I'm in there. Already. Stylus. Persephone. So I'm in the list. Okay, I'm, I'm in there twice now, oh. then. Yeah. For, the, for those of us that did manage to make it work, we're in there twice I didn't, now. I, for whatever reason, I didn't see any of them in the thing, so I don't know what ended up being the problem. Um... Hmm. But it, 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 All right, so I see Silas, I see Jax, so I will delete the extra Silas and the extra Jax. Mm -hmm. Rim, what did you roll? An eight. An eight. Thank you. Persephone, what did you roll? Thirteen. Thirteen. Thank you. Falkren, what did you roll? Eleven. Eleven. Thank you. And let's see, we need a Rhea. And a Yislin. In chat, who's looking forward to some Curse of Stra tomorrow? Ooh, me. Mm -hmm. Me. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Amber Temple coming up awfully quickly. Yeah. Scary. Uh, is, it, is it quickly? I don't know. I mean, I, I can't remember. I've not played. You guys are on your way. You're yeah, like... I've not played Ravenloft since I was in my teens. Okay. Mm. I believe that is. Oh, we need one. Oh, I do Lulu. Oh, sound's gone. And me. And. Nah. <laughs> oh, burn. Okay, let it Lulu roll. Okay. That's so great. And Typhon, what did you roll? Uh, 16. Uh, don't, no one, uh, I know you guys can still hear me, but no one, no one in chat can hear anyone think at the moment until I get my sound back on. So one second. I don't know why it's suddenly gone off. I can't hear anyone. This is suddenly unconnected. Here we go. Right now I can hear again. Sorry. I'm sure cool. you guys can still hear me through that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry about that, chat. My, my, my earpods, uh, whatever they're called. Just suddenly turned off. Didn't miss anything. Just trying to get everything set up. Mm -hmm. But I think we're good now. Yeah. Hey. All right. Man. At the top of the order, we have Jax. Okay. Um, can I see any of them? Well, yeah, you, you were actually like at the door, weren't I was, you? I was at the door, yeah. So. Yeah, you're the one who opened up. And you, as you opened the door, they turned and looked at you and turned invisible. So you do not have a violet target. I shoot where they were. Okay. Make an attack at disadvantage. Where are you? Hey, 16. 16 will hit. You are able to determine uh, where they were. They have not had a chance to move, and you managed to strike one. Uh, there was one that was more north and one that was more south. Which one did you want to hit? Um, take your pick. 
All right, I will say you did the one that was in one north. Uh, are they class? I mean, how much damage did you do? Seven. And then are they classes flat-footed or one? Doesn't matter, is it? Either way. No, it doesn't matter. Seven damage. Non Seven. Now you. So you're taking. Uh, you're you're giving me the half, or you're giving me the total. Seven total. Seven total. Thank you. You hear? It. <laughs> and you see a little black blood <laughs> spurt out. Anything else, Jax? Um, I will move here. Like in the corner there, I can't really put myself there, but behind the bookshelf and hide. All right, to roll that stealth. The twenty-five. All right. Typh, uh, not Typhon, uh, Falkron. Where uh, you are? Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. there is an attack. Um, I'm not revealing the ones that are invisible. Uh, but I could see their initiative roll on mine. So all of a sudden, you are uh, attacked by uh, tiny claws and a bite. And you steal yourself, expecting to see a creature revealed after this attack. But none appears. Hmm. Let's see. Well, hitting AC 17. Does not hit. Does not hit. Nice. All right. They scrape across your uh, armor and nothing happens. But you can't see the source of the attack and they're not revealed after your attack is made. Typhon. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I will look over the um, my shoulder to um, Persephone and say, the invisibility holds. Now would be a good time for that fairy fire. Thinking the same thing. I will try to <laughs> um, thorn whip the one, hopefully being able to see where it struck Falcon, and just try and make that attack at sure. disadvantage. Disadvantage. Okay. Uh, whoops. My bad. I should have control clicked, which is how you do it. 12. 12, unfortunately, is not a hit. The okay. tendrils streak out and hit nothing and come back into the ring. Anything else from you, Typhon? Uh, nope. I will step forward here to make it maybe easier for people to get past me. All right. Yep. This then makes a stealth check. Eee, that wasn't so good. Mm, nope. Uh, then she leans around the corner and she brings up her uh, crossbow and then puts it away and as long as we're not keeping any secrets anymore and <laughs> and a beam of energy streaks out from her arm, coalesces around her hand and streaks past Typhon and Falkron and attempts to hit the same one that you all were trying to hit. She succeeds. And a one of these strange demonic creatures clutches its chest in agony as it appears and then falls to the ground and begins to melt into black goo. That will bring us to Rhea. Rhea comes running forward. One, two, three, four, five. She can only get to there. And as she steps onto these broken bottles that are right there next to, um, in between uh, Jax and Falkron, she uh, stops and it's like, ah, looks down. Watch out, there's broken glass. Um, if you look, there will be areas with broken bottles and broken glass. Those are designated as difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. And she pulls out her sword and begins to look around, waiting for an attack. All right. Another one of these creatures comes around the corner. This one is not invisible. Let's see. But it is moving almost so fast you can't see it. Just <laughs> comes around and attacks Jax. 
I was stealthed. Uh, good call. And you rolled pretty high on that. Yeah, it doesn't see you. Uh, so he comes up and moves to attack Rhea. He takes her attack of opportunity. He's rolled a three. A three plus, yeah. She rolled a three and it's not enough to break its AC. So it attacks her uh, twice. And as it attacks, it's just, it's moving preternaturally fast. Potions. Yeah, it must be that juice. Ooh, one of them was a crit. Both of them hit. Okay. Oof. This thing goes all over Rhea, and just you see chunks of her flesh being torn uh, away from the places where it's able to get past her armor, and she's dripping blood, and she's just like, ah! little thing and she throws it down or she tries to grab it but it's moving so fast she can't get her hands around it and it lands on the ground and then runs away and she attempts to make an attack of opportunity on it and misses as it streaks back around the corner <laughs> and that is the end of its turn I hit brings us 17 to- though attack of opportunity. oh yeah uh, that's 17 hits yes indeed what did you attack with my needle all right. For 17 damage. Wow. Magical. As you strike at it, uh, you, f- as, as the uh, a blade comes to, to to strike it, before it manages to get past, get into its flesh, there's something that stops it, and you have to push through it. And just as it's out of reach, you manage to slash it. So not as much damage gets through, but it's still a significant hit. 17 magical, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That will bring us to Persephone. All right, fairy fire right here, twenty foot cube, fifteen. Uh, Can you bring out your um, yeah. spell uh, template? Yeah. Template, please. I put it further in. Special templates. Um. Fifteen dexterity. Fifteen save. dexterity. Will you show me again where it went? Um, go right. Here. We've got spell templates. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. We don't have to worry about it right now. But um, you said fifteen foot, right? So this area here. Twenty feet. Twenty feet. F- fifteen dexterity. Ah, there it is. Excellent. Let's see, what does that get? So one of them is dead. You see. Let's see here. Get down to that one. All of a sudden, this one appears. It's now glowing in sparkly lights. It's like, (laughs) it's trying to um, wash it off. Unfortunately, that is the only one that is currently in there that is not dead. Anything else, Persephone? Um, I'm going to move up in the room. Actually, I'll go right behind Rhea. I'm done. Okay. Falkron. All right, so I'm going to go up five, and then 10, 15. That puts me in range, and I'm going to hit that summer bitch okay. with uh, Quietus. The blade strikes. Mm-hmm. Advantage. Indeed, because of fairy fire. Indeed. All right, so I roll and oh well, pff, I hit with a twenty-three, but I guess it I'll does hit. Do... Let me let me do that again, just for kicks. Try to crit. Try to crit. Try to crit. Oh, okay. Well, so but the twenty-three uh, hits. Indeed, uh, it does. Is going to be eight magical one-handed slashing damage. And that is enough to finish it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a bonus action uh, to uh, shoot a 
No, I shouldn't say shoot. That's a fair. Uh, I'm going to use a bonus action and cast Healing Word onto Rhea. Okay. Who was just attacked by that crit. So she gets... Uh, she gets 10 healing. Thank you. And then I also get... No, well, I'm, 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 I'm at full health, but I would have gotten healing because I'm now a 6th level player. So nice. Mm. Uh, anything else, Falkron? No, I'm, I'm sorry, and that is my turn. Yes. All right. Let's see here. One, two... Any, any minute now the cube's going to come behind us and it's going to be great another one of these uh, creatures comes out and as it comes it's small but you're looking at it and it is yoked out you see it's neck is completely engulfed in uh, shoulder muscles and it's <laughs> Uh, <laughs> triceps and biceps are just bulging. It's like, and it reaches and it picks up the bookcase, just and throws it at you, Falkron. We're gonna call that one Cartman. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is definitely um, a beefcake. Yeah. Roid rage. And it's definitely like, make, a, yeah, make, a dex- make a dexterity saving throw. I will certainly try. All right, I roll and. With a three, <laughs> three, <laughs> this bookcase comes flying at you, uh, and you're like, ah! Oh, and he brings it down, but he's actually holding on to it as he brings it down. So he hells. picked it up and brought it over, standing on the corpse of its fellow, and just wham brings it right down on top of you. Uh, like WWE now. Oh, yeah, yeah so right. Good lord, he has a child. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Thirteen points of bludgeoning damage oh, as God. the um, as the bookshelf just <laughs> smashes into splinters. Books go flying everywhere, and he's like, <laughs> "Is that Jack's laughing, or is that the imp laughing?" Uh, the <laughs> That's the imp laughing. From the top of the ropes, ladies and gentlemen. So. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put that on top of Falkron right there. Um, <laughs> Someone. So he is standing. Hey, it can be helpful in some there. kind of way. I could draw destroyed bookshelves. All yeah. right. That is the end of its turn. Uh, then, God, there's so many of these things. Okay. Oh, great. What? <laughs> huh? Um. So... One comes next to you, Jax. I need you to make a. Um, I'm not still class as hidden, am I? So. No, you're not still class as hidden. So I need you to make a wisdom saving throw as it appears next to you, going. And it sort of sends out this wave of. of um, well, it looks scary in a sort of a startling kind of way, but as it hits you, it, oh, never mind. With a 19, <laughs> a 19, you feel like you were spooked for a second, but there was a uh, some sort of magical effect that came over you that was encouraging you to be more afraid than you need to be. Um, and you resist it, but it attacks you. It bites you. Excuse me, it, it claws you, not biting. I bite you. Bite, bite, bite. Roll a seven. I'm pretty sure that f- doesn't hit. And another one comes and appears next to Rhea. Does the same thing. And she is rolling like crap tonight. She ah, ah, begins to back away from it. She is frightened. Hmm. That is the end of it. That will... Wait a minute. One of these is... Two of these are gone. Two of these are should not be on the board. Okay. Now we're to Silas. Okay. I rush forward next to Rhea and stab at the one between Rhea and Falkron. Okay. That's an attack with the glaive, and I did get within five feet of it just to be within. That is a 13 to hit. That is a hit. Woo. 
and that damage is 11 points slashing magical. All right. It crumples. It You completely splice right through it as if it wasn't even there, and the top half falls next to the bottom half, and both just sizzle away, forming a black goo on this nice red carpet. Then I'm going to use the remainder of my movement to step over it, standing in the goo, and using my bonus action, yell at the buff quasit. That's it. (laughs) Okay, Rim, it's your turn. Standing Uh, in a puddle of demon ichor. Thank you, everybody, for getting out of my way. I can shoot over Jax without a problem. Um, I'm going to take uh, three shots above Jax's head at the imps uh, to his west. Sorry, I didn't realize it was in your way. Uh, it's all good. Uh, Falkren, uh, I'm sorry, you are prone. I'm going to go ahead and give you a thing. Oh, yeah, no, I figured when I was hit with a bookshelf, I was like, no, nah, it's going to... Rim. Attack number one is a 22. That is a hit. Uh, For nine. Mm -hmm. Attack number two. Nice. Whoa. Oh. Oh. It's a crit. My God. 14. Yikes. Does that take out? uh... Yeah, both of the arrows come and and you see right as they're about to strike, they slow a little bit so they don't penetrate as deep. But... They manage to get all the way through whatever protection this creature has, and you see it. And those of you who speak Abyssal says, But I was the strong one! And he <laughs> falls dead. Okay, so I've got one last shot to take against the other dude, and this one has Gloomstalker. Ouchies if it connects. Uh, uh, but it probably doesn't at 11. 11 does not hit, I'm afraid. That is the end of my turn. Well right. played, Rim. Let's see here. Lulu comes and hides behind you, Persephone. Good, stay hidden. What's happening? Um, okay. <laughs> there's a as from behind the bookshelf that you see in the very back of the room there's a shutter and then it falls forward as an enormous one of these creatures suddenly grows just like Animal from the Great Muppet movie. It's in a large potion. It's <laughs> what they now like normal stuff. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> what did he take? And it begins to... As it gets up, it its head gets stuck against the ceiling and its arms are hitting both of the sides of the wall as it's... And it comes forward completely destroying all of the furniture in its path. Just boom, boom. Oh, Jesus. As it comes forward, it squeezes down into this hallway and reaches out to grab you, Falkron. It has advantage because you're prone. Oh, I buried under a bookshelf. It reaches, it grabs you and the bookshelf and pulls you up. Um, it tries to, at any rate. Uh, please make yeah. an athletics or acrobatics check your choice. Well, let's see here. Athletics. They're going to both be at disadvantage because you are prone. All right. So I'll do acrobatics then. Okay. And there's roll number one and roll number two. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. That'll probably be the one that kills me. No, uh, and then <laughs> the second roll... Oh my god! <laughs> oh my! Oh good! Yes. What yeah. was that? What was that roll? What was that? Oh no! So I thought, so the first one was a six, and I was like, "Well, thank, that can't be any worse than that." And, but and then thankfully it wasn't. It was a seven. So it reaches yeah. out like the rancor and picks you up, and just and you are now grappled in its hand. But that is its only attack. 
We're now Good back. news, you're not prone anymore. <laughs> we're yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the top of the round. I'm going to go ahead and move, and move it you on up. here. Back to the top. Uh, who is that? That looks like Jax. You are up the top. Um, Jax gets excited when he sees the size of that imp. Um, he will move to here between Silas's legs. Uh, hide. Mm -hmm. Bonus action hide. Okay. He's actually hiding between my legs. Yeah. Or? 18 still. Can you can you hide? I think that's a halfling that has that ability to hide in somebody's. Well, I'm hiding behind smaller than the a halfling. I'm so. talking about a bookshelf. Oh, the bookshelf. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You can hide behind the bookshelf. Uh, I, I had an image of Jax like screwing between Silas's legs, then Rhea's legs, then Persephone's yeah. legs. <laughs> Definitely doable. Um, All right, 18. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll come to here and then jump out jump up his arm and try and cut his arm off <laughs> yeah. make your roll that's my stinky dwarf come on give me a crit come on I need to be a crit oh, okay. 21 to hit 21 is a hit for 28 damage because I use fury of 28 the 28 damage again as you're 27 damage down, there appears to be some sort of resistance right before you hit the skin but that did do a significant amount of damage 26 27 damage sorry. right got it okay did you call me your stinky dwarf I did oh right <laughs> From, <laughs> let's see here. There is a <laughs> and sound and <laughs> and all of a sudden a gout of flame erupts from nowhere. <laughs> oh great! Why not? Given the size of that one beastie, it's probably going to scorch his backside. Oh my! Yeah, seriously. Let's see here. This really is a Muppets episode. <laughs> From the uh, this creature that somehow retains its invisibility, even though it is attacking, that is far too large. A oh, that'll take care of it, though. Right there, a gout of flame comes <laughs> shooting out. I need everyone in that area. So Persephone. Siphon, uh, uh, Siphon, Silas, and Rhea to make a <laughs> dexterity saving throw at disadvantage, please. Oh, disadvantage. Good. Come on, Persephone. Oh, 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 damn it! I think there was an eight for Persephone and a six for Silas on the downside uh, disadvantage. I'm guessing they both failed. Rolls right here. Yes, they both oh. failed. Rhea, however, succeeded. How come you got disadvantage? Yeah, Rhea. They didn't. The creature was invisible when it attacked. Oh. Um, that is. Sorry. Um, Fourteen points of fire damage to Silas and to Persephone, and seven to Rhea. You hear coughing and see nothing. Next up is Typhon. I'm going to step up here and. <clears throat> oh, oh, I have a thing. Lightning Bolty, as it's called. <laughs> I like it. Wow. Um, kind of, I can't really move it to exactly where I want it to be because I want it to go up just a bit. So it includes the square just north to me, if that makes sense as well. Try it now. Oh, you're trying to sp uh, split the squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I'll see. My DMs kinda never like, let me do that. Kind of like there. Splitting the squares is kind of one of those things that is going beyond the... Uh, the... We'll have to talk about that. I will allow it for now. But... Uh, that I feel like the spells are designed to hit when they say they're they're a five foot radius that they are talking about a single five foot right. line. 
So if there's as two things to be, standing, as a, yeah. So right as opposed to, to being other, able to both of them, yeah. As opposed to being able to take the five foot line and make it hit ten feet, actually, in order for yeah. them to feel the full brunt of the force of the effect, it needs to be all encompassed on one square. But we'll allow it for now since we haven't okay. discussed I, it. I mean, I'm fine either way. It's just let me, yeah, you, you let me know. Cool. Um, that is a deck save. Deck save. Well, oh. yeah, the big one failed. Um, fail. And a fail. Yay. Everyone failed. How much damage is that? 25 points of lightning damage. Oh All right. So, uh, let me remove that. And I will remove that. So, as that spell goes off, there is this one that was, you see smoke still streaming from its mouth as it looks like it was getting ready to inhale and breathe another gout of flame. But this lightning bolt <laughs> lands on the ground and then you see the black ichor begin to form and in the middle of it is like this this flame as this whatever it had ingested was still in its belly and burns out harmlessly. Let's see here. Uh, the one beyond it. So did, so did that one die? Oh yes, not? it is dead. This one also died because it failed and it is just a normal closet. This one also failed. How much damage? 25. <laughs> <laughs> And it falls as a normal sized closet lands on the ground. And Falcon, you land right next to it. I land um, you are only 10 feet up in the air, so you okay. don't take any damage. <laughs> I, I but land that is the end of combat. Wow, guys. <laughs> Dang. You bring out the big spells. As Falcon is like laying on the ground, she's like, weirdest damn combat <laughs> yet. <laughs> that was oh. my kill. I hate closets. <laughs> Enough messing yeah. around. I'm going to step forward and help Falkern get up. Ugh. I'm sitting on her belly. Is everyone all right? Oh, I had a soft landing. Thank you. Now, is is there things that we would now be able to witness? Yeah. Is there, is this room give me a second, or? guys. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I'm, I'm asking nicely, not Russian. Sorry. How did that for it to be for for you having a lot of stuff to take care of? I have a Serbian friend. Mm. I have a Russian friend. Everybody's a Russian. I have a Czech one too. Is the Czech one male? (laughs) Uh, 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 uh. Hey, sound guy. (laughs) Czech one too. I have a Czech one too. Go home. All right. Um, You now see what appears to be a very elaborate and also completely destroyed laboratory for the construction of potions. There is a mist that is hanging around uh, low to the ground where numerous alembics and potions have broken and expelled their contents, which have mixed with one another and creating sort of a miasma of who knows what. There is a bookshelf in the back that has fallen over as the large closet came up and over it. Broken glass everywhere. You have to be very careful moving around. Um, And bookshelves there to the north and south of where Rim and Silas are standing. the only thing that seems to be mostly intact are the bookshelves that are um, between, that are on the, uh, not the bookshelves, the shelving that is um, there to the north and south of Persephone. They appear to be reagents of every type and sort that you can imagine. Hmm. 
siphon and anything you can salvage? I was Ooh. just going to ask that. I was oh, going to walk around amongst the smashed things and kind of look around. and I will check that my glasses are on my head, and then I will search around for secret doors and stuff. They are on your head. Make an investigation check. Where, where are you specifically looking for secret doors? Um, behind bookcases, on the walls, underneath. Just looking Is it everywhere. in that black thing over there? <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> One part that had not been revealed. I Wouldn't was, you know it? I was thinking more of like, you know, obviously I'm behind the bookshelves and obviously in here. Any secret doors, any secret compartments. All right. Um, we'll spend some time doing it. Yeah. I don't know why that didn't work. How much time are you spending? Um, as long as, I mean, as long as we're all in here. So uh, he'll just be looking around the floor and on the walls and on the ceiling with a 24 investigation. All right, so we've got a 24 investigation from Jax. Um, you do not find any secret doors, any secret compartments. Um, it appears that the construction of this room, what you see is what you get. The most notable thing about it is all of the smashed glass and various um, puddles of potions. Um... So, no secret doors, Jax. Typhon, what are you looking for? Um, well, you said that there aren't... Are there books, too? Like, would there... There are I, books. I, I guess I would look for spell books and salvageable um, alchemy reagents. And make a um, an investigation check, please. Okay. 25. You find... Um, how do I show something to just one person? Uh, you can put it in just my journal. I'm trying to do that. You could ask us all to not look for a minute, flash it on the screen. That's true. Uh, I want him to have it for, yeah, journal. Yeah, or you could discord uh, it just to him. You could it's do only giving discord. me the option to show it with any players. Do you want to share it with all the players in the game? No. <laughs> no, I or there's no, a I thing don't. if you no. put edit here it is it there I got, it. I, it. I got it and put it in my hand. I got it now there okay. we go you have found this I pit you pocket, see it? I pit pocket Typhon so I can see what it is as well <laughs> <laughs> see it uh, Typhon I do okay oh, that's and cool. you, you are also able to find um, reagents enough scattered in amongst things uh, to create Two greater healing potions. Nice. How much time would it take? Um, I believe for a greater healing potion, it's going to take. Let's see, I'll have to look that up. Um, longer than an hour. Yeah. I so, I what? Just as a side note, player note, I sort of intended to be crafting healing potions and stuff, but they take like a day, and I'm like, right. this is a very like. Poison it is. We don't exactly have days to craft potions yeah, and right, stuff, right. so I'm kind of regretting that choice. But, you know, it helps understand other things. So, um, um, I'm not doing it. Okay. So, uh, Anybody else looking for anything? Dr. Ness is uh, easily if this is like where she believed the teleport. Oh, the there must be somewhere be. down here. Pity about all these potions. I wonder if any of them are intact. I'll look for unbroken bottles where I am. I can make an investigation check. Um. Five. You find a red potion that is obviously a potion of healing. Oh. All right. Well, that is all. Would it be could could I also look for bottles? potions? Sure, yeah. make an investigation check. I'm guessing I can't. Eleven. You find a potion that has a yellowish tint, and you look at it and you see bubbles in it that are 
spinning around. You found Fanta. <laughs> they're not bubbling up. I they're just moving pop. in a circle. I uh, show it to the Ask if he knows what it is. Is it possible to identify it? Um, well, casting the spell would definitely identify it. Of right. But um, aside from that, I um, open it, put a little dab on my tongue, kind of. Sure. Um, roll, um, roll something that would be the equivalent of your... Um, you have proficiency in alchemist's tools, right? I do. Plus intelligence would be yeah. the same you as like You can add Arcana. it to your skill right. list, by the way, those things. If you yeah, now you, now you can do it yeah. with... Um, Additional skills. Ooh, Additional skills. Custom yeah. skills. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Yeah. I did it Between for bless games. and everything, so if anyone's casting bless, I can just click on my oh, attack button for bless. Oh, damn it. Natural one. It is well. definitely not a healing potion. Based on the color, you thought it could be one of two things, but based on the flavor, it's not one of those two things. Hmm. It's both. It's both of those two things. <laughs> Liquid sterile. Uh, I just say I don't know. I'll have to look at it. Another so time. It's tang. All right. I say, is anyone else allowed to look for potions, or uh, have we exhausted all the shattered bottles on the floor? Can I have a look? Go ahead. Yeah, Jack should be doing all that. Yeah, I, I, if I can have a look, I'll have a look. Well, this is all happening at the same time, Jack. You were looking for um, oh, um, uh, uh, secret doors. Falcon so I twenty. <laughs> so I critted on my investigation. Wow, yeah. excellent. Um, okay, you find a potion that um, you shake it and you can barely see any liquid moving. It appears to be almost like a liquid metal. Not quite oh. like not quite like mercury. Yeah. But sort of a gray um, shiny looking sludge as you move it back and forth. Awesome. All right. Um, the circle isn't under this rug, is it? You want to check? Sure. I mean, that would just be... You lift the rug. Pieces of broken glass go... around. There is nothing underneath it. Except for the flagstones. Do we... Do we check the treasure room? Or the cube. Oh, God. What are you going to do, folks? And Jax, you're sure there's no doors or anything in this room? I can't find anything. Well, all right. Typhon, could you send your familiar into the... Should we... I mean, Jax, would you... Want to check out the treasure room? Oh, yes, 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 yes. first. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I would like to be the first one. Familiars what? willingly walk into death. Yeah. Is, I will it, still, is it still invisible moment. or is it? Yeah, I'll have it be invisible. I will keep, I will see through its eyes as it goes through the darkness and into the room and see what happens. Right. It moves past the darkness. Typhon <laughs> puts his arm out for somebody to steady him. Is anybody? I'm right there. He yeah. gets his other arm. Jax is next to you, don't worry. Nods at you, Falcon. Best to take care of it when he's like this. Oh, mm -hmm. And your imp goes through the invisible darkness towards the treasure room. As it crosses the threshold, you all have to shield your eyes and duck away as this entire hallway is filled with hot, hot flame as these torches suddenly grow enormous and just <laughs> and then go out. And I'm afraid your familiar is no more. It's you fire though? Hmm? It's fire? It's, it's magic fire. No it's immune to fire. It is immune to fire. But is it immune to so magic it fire? Took, it took damage other than fire? <sighs> John is not happy. Uh oh, Me Meta bum hurt. Here we go. Fair enough. Immune to fire. 
So it moves into this room, and as it crosses the threshold, the treasure disappears, and it turns into a common bedroom. And then a tip by a hate it when attack. the rules get in. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Well remembered. So, that's, that's one Keeping way of honest. luring you into someone's bedroom, isn't it? That's right. Uh, right. So everything went white for your um, your familiar for a moment, uh, Typhon, and you you just cringe away from it instinctively, but. As the fire winks out, your imp continues along, completely unscathed, and steps into the room. And as it does, the treasure all disappears. And uh, can you see the bed and the couch? And nope. Negative. Racing? No. You, not? Just you can't see anything? You can see the, the nice carpet. That's the it. nice yeah. carpet. I wonder where everything else is. What layer have I you got burned by the fire. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. It might be. That's, right. that's true. You might have to move it. Top. Ah, there, there you is. go. There it is. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, something interesting about that rug. Uh, <laughs> all my layers are all messed up now. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Where is everything? It could have been so cool. It looks nice right now. Last oh, no, no it is very cool. There we good. go. That's better for me. Is that a little S- tiny? What is that? Okay. It's like Exorcist floating furniture. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's not good. Like, uh, I don't think any of us could do that. Does what? it seem like the the um, flames would reactivate, or are the, have the torches been? Um, well, you're. Uh, I will fly through again. Your uh, imp comes out. The torches appear to be back to normal. Okay, have him. I'll have him. I don't have control over him anymore, but just fly sort of back in and then out to see if the trigger <laughs> point re triggers it. <laughs> Sorry. He's fine. <laughs> no, he is. I just love this image. Like, yeah, but does it like. The rest of you all, so you actually all felt and saw this conflagration, and you all look at Typhon, who's continuing on like nothing has happened. And once again, it goes through and comes and it looks through these um this uh this door and it sees the treasure steps across the threshold and <laughs> damn it okay. um comes back again and jack says do it again and point his knife he's just him. like a husky in the snow right now it's fine he's just <laughs> yeah, no, playing no, around no, rolling no. around in the fire doing oh, barrel yeah. rolls through the flames um um, all right. There's got to be a mechanism to turn it off or something, right? So, Tell is it. it so, Typhon, is it as you're going across the threshold? Did you step on, you couldn't have stepped on something, you're flying, no, he's right? flying, yes. You've got to hmm. hate to send anyone down there. So, there's no treasure. There's no I. Treasure. Interesting. I shall I go in to try and disable it? That's really not your bag, is it? No, I mean. Well, can you get past it? I can try. You said that when it crosses the threshold. Yes. So as long as I don't cross the threshold, I'll be fine. Well, I could also get across, but. Well, if you're volunteering, do your thing. Well, fine. Are you sure? Quite. Off you go. She crosses her arms and kind of leans back and raises an eyebrow. So it seemed like the fire did not reach into the room. Correct. Correct. All right. I will. Um. Oh, I thought that was a further range, actually. And it triggered when he hit the threshold as he stepped on to the area past like moving into the room um he was definitely engulfed in the flame okay well i will cautiously walk forward 
You all watch Typhon stepping to his death. He moves into the darkness and disappears from view. However, you know, um, because of your familiar, you know that it does not last long. Yeah, I will look out of the darkness and then Misty step a few feet into the room. All right, you are now standing in the room. Um, a very uh, well-appointed uh, room, not ostentatious, but comfortable. All the furniture is of good quality make. Um, there's a nice scent to the air. Uh, the bed looks extremely comfortable. There is a table in the corner that has food on it that looks like it's been freshly prepared. Um, small desks with the various books next to the uh, bed and also next to a chair. Um, and a large mirror. That mirror seems suspicious. I know we're getting a little late. Um, obviously, I want to look around in some of the First of all, though, to see if maybe this, whatever this is, or this, the candelabra, maybe find a way to disable the trap. All right, make an investigation check. Okay. Eleven. You go to examine the candelabra and you realize that it is bolted to the floor. You feel like this is definitely something. However, you can't figure out what to do. Can't turn it. All right. Um, uh, if they give me a few minutes, I can cast Identify on it, maybe. Typhon? He's still alive. If he's dead, I'm allowed to gut his imp. <laughs> Seems fair. Quite fine. Oh. It is the last, it appears to be the last step over the threshold that triggers the fire. You are correct. There's a candelabra in here bolted to the floor. Something else strange. I can't quite find the, well, if there even is an off switch, I can't seem to find it. Is it lit? Yes. Blow it out. <sighs> I blow it. And I blow it. <laughs> the um, torches in the hallway dim. And do the although, same with these, maybe. Yeah, it's the same with these also. They come to a smaller pinprick of light. And you have successfully like disabled, disabled, disabled the trap. Okay. And we are indeed late. I let time get away from me here. Um, What's under this rug? <laughs> well, <laughs> tune in <laughs> next week to find out. The enlarged closet comes back. <laughs> <laughs> having, having survived the closet <clears throat> potion attack and navigated the trapped hallway, the adventurers are now standing in the bedroom of somebody wondering what to do next. And that is where we will pick up on Monday.